Hello everyone, welcome back to the Captain Logan Show. It's me, Captain Logan, and joining me as always is my wonderful chat moderator and producer, DJ Martinez. DJ, uh, we're finally getting away from DC and talking about Marvel again tonight. I never thought I would say MCU sounds like a refreshing topic this evening. I know, we haven't, we've been on a DC kick, man. I know, Zaslav took over the channel. The first <laughs> show we did... Talking about the new head of uh, of Warner Brothers Discovery, Discovery Warner Brothers. I still am not sure what the order is supposed to be. I couldn't think of his name. Now it's just in my head all the time. It's just oh. like, all I can think about is Zaslav and his machinations. He sounds like a Marvel villain. He, he really does. Yeah. He Actually, he sounds more like a DC villain. He, he, he sounds like a like a mad scientist. Well, like I a cat. He... He's, he sounds like a Cadmus scientist. I think he could he could kick it around with uh with the well, who's the villain in uh, Winter Soldier? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, gosh. I can't think of it right off either. No, I know I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, died. I can't think of it. You'll, 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> His favorite MCU. It starts film, guys. with a Z, and all I've got in my head is Zoloft, and I know it's not that? Zoloft. Oh, it's just Zola. Zola, Arnim Zola. Zola. There you yeah. go. It's uh, it's it's Arnim Zoloft. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Arnim Zaslov. Uh, <laughs> Arnim Zaslov. Yeah, Zola Arnim... and Zaslov is the next Disney Plus show. <laughs> Arnim Zoloft. He he got his uh, consciousness put in a computer, but if you spend enough time with him, he he makes you not feel as depressed and gives you a, a little bit more um, self-assuredness for a few hours anyway. anyway uh, thanks a lot for joining us this evening. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's Thursday night. It's time for another exciting Captain Logan show. We're going to talk to you for at least an hour, but probably longer as always. Tonight's lead-in topic is... Uh, we're going we're gonna to skip Phase 5 entirely. No, we'll probably talk about that a little bit too, but tonight a uh, leading topic. Uh, Marvel jumped the gun and told us uh, about everything going on in Phase Five, and even jumped into Phase Six. So we're gonna do that too. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna skip ahead, and uh, we're gonna get way ahead of ourselves, just like they did. Uh, I say that it's only 2025. We're cramming like what what at one point would have been seven years of material in three years, it seems like. And we're gonna talk about the next Avengers movies, which won't be until we've had 20 other shows and films. Good. Good. And we're gonna speculate tonight a little bit about uh, what characters we might expect to see on the roster uh, for the teams for those movies. And I still want to do uh, some some more uh, like specific speculation uh, about everything going on with the MCU, uh, eventually with Austin. We just haven't gotten around to making that video yet, so I wanted to kind of put a pin in it tonight with specifically this topic. I found an article with uh, uh, some speculation about 10 characters that whoever wrote this article uh, thinks might be there, and we'll take a look at that and uh, compare it to our own ideas. Uh, there's a Screen, a screen Rant article by Jordan uh, Ichibuki. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. And uh, anyway, so we'll take a look at that here in just a little bit. But welcome, everybody. Uh, if you want to interact with us tonight, uh, you can leave a super chat in any dollar amount that guarantees that we'll talk about whatever you guys want to chat about tonight and you can keep the conversation about the lead-in topic going or you can ask us about anything else under the sun within reason especially pop culture related stuff superheroes uh superhero movies comics science fiction uh video games whatever comes to mind and floats your boat we will do our level best to weigh in on uh and thanks so very much to anybody who has ever or will ever uh or does tonight uh, leave a super chat. You guys are wonderful, and it really uh, supports the channel and helps me make this my full-time job. So really appreciate it. Uh, if you don't want to do that, and, or you can't, uh, you can leave a regular uh, comment, and we will uh, do as many of those tonight as possible as well. And make sure and tag those uh, at DJ, DJ Martinez, at The Welder, at Marvel Sweatshirt Man. Uh, DJ <laughs> will answer to any of those things and more, I am sure. So uh, anyway, welcome once again. Uh, we are really excited to do it for the 208th and, and 18th time, DJ. I was going to say, we already do 208, man. 208's in the books. We did. 10 shows ago. 
We're like shooting that number up now that we're twice a week again. Yeah, yeah, boosting it up. Holy, I read that article that you that you sent me. Which one? The sheer amount of characters. The one about the possible Avengers. Like, yeah. holy, there's so many. It, I just kept going. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I forgot and, about all them. And it's just going to... And it's just going to keep going because just look at the sheer number of shows and movies coming up. Uh, this is from TechRadar.com with a nice handy dandy list of everything coming in Phase Five. Obviously, a lot of these projects. And I, I'm I'm mentioning this now, by the way, because when all this came out, I was on hiatus because I picked the worst possible month to not be broadcasting. And so we didn't talk about any of this stuff when the announcements first dropped. Uh, I should have come in and just done a couple hour show and got it knocked out, but I didn't. So we're doing a little bit of that now. So I'm not going to go through every single one of these things, uh, but I'm putting it on the screen just to remind us all, here's what we have to look forward to or to dread, depending on how you feel about the uh, MCU situation right now, because, of course, it's polarizing, and a lot of people feel like it's very oversaturated. A lot of other people are very excited about the sheer amount of stuff that they get to consume right now, and so it just depends on whatever camp you fall in, and I'm not going to judge you either way. If you're excited, more power to you. I hope that you enjoy a lot of the things that are coming. I am uh, somewhat in the middle on things. I'm behind on stuff, DJ. I, I'm overwhelmed. I can't keep up with everything. I've not finished Miss Marvel, and now I'm not compelled to because you and other people are telling me that it kind of falls off in the second half. I'll finish it eventually. I haven't finished Moon Knight because uh, I couldn't get into that show, and She-Hulk just started, and I probably will wait to start watching that until at least the second episode drops because I asked Austin about it, and he said uh, he was real on the fence at the end of that first episode and wanted to see one more, and he implored me to wait until I could see two together. So I'm going to try Trust his judgment on that, and I'm going to wait. And I didn't have time to watch it today anyway, because uh, I was working on uh, Rewind and other projects. So, anyway, I digress. Uh, but I brought this list up to say, so obviously a lot of the characters involved with these shows and movies are characters you've heard of before, but several of them will also be introducing even yet more characters that could wind up being superheroes that show up in... Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, which, if you've not heard by now, uh, will be the two-part, uh, and this time they're saying for sure it will count as kind of a two-part movie, uh, unlike Infinity War and Endgame, even though we all still look at it that way, most of us, I think. Uh, but we're going, we're going to have... Um, the, uh, uh, th this is from uh, the direct.com just to cite my sources so that you can see what we're looking at here uh, but this is um, an article about uh, all of the things that sorry I was too far down uh, about all of the things coming out in phase six that we know about so far because we're just jumping right ahead already to phase six uh, but yeah so King Dynasty and Secret Wars come out uh, in 2025 uh, May 2nd for the first part and November 7th for the second part and are I'm sure going to be filmed uh, together or right back to back because they're six months apart and done by different directors so like you'd think only being six months apart it would be uh, like one guy making all of it at the same time but that's not how they're handling that uh, but anyway so uh, that's that's why I wanted to talk about Avengers roster uh, but DJ you, you look at this list, and uh, like I said, a lot of these characters are, or a lot of these shows are with characters that we're already familiar with, but like, we're gonna, you know we're introducing more people in Thunderbolts, that'll probably be entirely new characters, um, Ironheart is introducing new characters, uh, Marvels might be introducing some new characters, I don't know, I mean, the, the like, the, the three, uh, the Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel characters we'll be familiar with, but who else, who, who knows what else shows up in that? I don't know if Guardians is introducing <clears throat> new characters. I think Adam Warlock is supposed to finally be in that, maybe. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Even more characters that we haven't had yet. Not to mention the street level uh, side that we're finally getting with uh, Daredevil and Moon Knight and mm -hmm. shows like that on Disney+. Plus. It's crazy. It's madness. Why it's in the world did they announce two phases at once? They're like, hey guys, <laughs> don't worry. We know what we're doing. We have a plan. I think the bigger question is why we're still calling them phases. Well, yeah, what constitutes a phase? Are all the all the phases have been well? I guess this phase was quick because they missed a year, so they had to cram it in in two years. But well, they're usually about three years, right? Yeah. Well, and, and not anymore because uh, like like phase six. I mean, like the end of that is supposed to be these Avengers movies, and that's the end of twenty twenty five. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. 
Isn't that nuts? No, they're, they're cramming them in really quick now. A phase now is about a year and a half, it looks like, and that has nothing to do with COVID. Like, that, that's a brand new thing. They just announced here, here's 12 uh, projects. Only three of them. We're going to tell you what they are. It's Fantastic Four. It's two Avengers movies and then other stuff. And this article I was showing you was suggesting what some of those other things are going to probably be, including Armor Wars, which we've had an announcement for but didn't know where that was going to fall yet. So that has to be in phase six now. Um, Etc. It's hard not to talk around all over the place because there's a million projects. That's crazy. But yeah, it's wild. But are you with me, DJ? Like, the face thing needs to go away. The, like, just stop it. The, we should be at the end of that. Uh, because part, part of, and, and I partly say that, I, this was a point I made a couple shows ago, but I partly say that because I think the face thing overwhelms people and confuses them when they hear it. Because it used to be you'd get a phase and here's all the, uh, you know, the, the it used to be overwhelming. It seemed like a lot of movies, but, you know, it's only seven or eight <laughs> to the, like, 20-something projects we have now. And it's like you watch all these things and then you're rewarded very often by some real big event toward the end of it. Uh, and it was already kind of arbitrary, like, we, where the phases began and ended and all of that. And now the first three phases feel like one big phase because all of it now is, is roped into the infinity. That's a saga. Saga, yeah, because I guess even Three phases equals a saga. Because even phases have to be trilogies now, <laughs> just like movies. So true. That's very true. <laughs> uh, but now, if you call it a phase, it feels like uh, they're telling you this stuff is all important. You need to watch all of it, and there's too much of it to demand that. Like. Yeah. Or, or, or expect it. I shouldn't say demand, because I'm sure Kevin Feige and, and uh, you know, a lot of the movie producers would say, oh, yeah, no, you can pick and choose until you go into a movie and you're like, oh, wait, like Wanda is the bad guy in this Doctor Strange movie, but I didn't bother watching any of the Disney Plus shows, so I don't know what Fairview is or what they're talking about, you know, yeah. and you're not going to know till you get there. <laughs> or you get there, oh, hey, well, there's, a, there's another Hawkeye <laughs> just here. And you can say, oh, well, she was in all the trailers. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you know that she was involved in a TV show or how, or how much you needed to know about that. And they did a fine job of making that watchable enough if you haven't bothered with that show. But all of this stuff is going to get very complicated if we use too many characters and, uh, you know, like, add to their, um, you know, character progression and histories from the shows that they're invented for uh, or introduced in. Uh, if, like, once we get far enough down the pike where we have an Avengers movie with, uh, you know, it used to be a simpler times, DJ. It used to be mm. that a, an Avengers movie only had 65 characters. And uh, now we're going to have Avengers movies with, like, 170 characters, potentially. Um, I'm joking. But... I do kind of worry about that, that it's going to lose people. And I'm already worried that people are uh, getting overwhelmed and that the thing, the, the whole thing is oversaturated and that you're already losing viewers. But by the time you get to, and this is one of the big things I want to talk about tonight, by the time you get to these new Avengers movies, um, how many people are going to like either throw their hands in the air and go, I just can't keep up with all this anymore? And how many people are going to go, okay, hopefully I can follow this. It's a big event. It's going to be a cultural touchstone. If there's another Thanos snap, I can't miss that. And go anywhere. Yeah. And then the third thing, of course, how many people actually keep up with all of it? Yeah, uh, Mutale says... Or no, Adam Arch says, now we have phases and sagas. You need to study to follow this stuff. Uh, when I was in college, there was Dude, a... Dude, I do this for a living. It's my full-time job. I'm not keeping up with all of it. You know what I mean? I, I just mean, yeah. like, the, the you know story analysis of superhero stuff. Like... It, it feels like homework to me now. I can't imagine somebody just trying to enjoy themselves. Well, I was going to say, when I was in college, there was a uh, Tolkien course, like Tolkienology or whatever, yeah. like just to study Tolkien's mythology because it's so vast and stuff. There's going to be an MCU course that you can take. There's got to be. I think there already is. There has to be already a thing. As, as just, you know, kind of an introduction to, I don't know, like storytelling or uh, narrative analysis or something. Like, I've, I've heard of this because... Pop culture studies are very popular now for obvious reasons, and mm -hmm. it, it gets people to pay to be at college. Um, but you're right. Like, I think we'll see even more of that down the road as, is like, a legitimate it? mythology. Like, it'll is be it? a mythology class. It will be multiple semesters. Like, you can't even get it all in in one semester. Yeah. So yeah, much and, stuff. And they'll call each semester a phase. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so DJ, I uh, knowing what you know, and both of us, uh, by the way, are not fully caught up. And I know there's a lot of things like you haven't seen Doctor Strange too. Like I know there's some things that you haven't looked at. There's some things that I have not finished at least. Um, so there there will be some characters that I won't think about or won't have much to to bring to the table to talk about, and we won't bring up anything like everybody, of course. But I. Uh, Top five characters, and they don't have to be new characters. It could be legacy characters, like however you want to look at it, uh, like like whoever you want to bring to the table. But um, for the roster of heroes in the the first of those two Avengers movies, uh, Kang Dynasty, keeping in mind that it's the end of the whole multiverse saga, so obviously in different dimensions have to be involved in this story, um, what five characters immediately come to mind is these must be in this movie to you uh like who i want or who i think is likely who you think is likely okay okay uh well shang chi is as a guarantee guarantee i mean you, you don't take a street level character and give him like insane level powers so he's like one of the most powerful people in the mcu right now unless you're gonna make him an avenger that's the whole reason you do that but you also <laughs> don't even have to go that far it's the director of that movie oh is it really yeah He'll, oh, okay. he'll, he'll be there. In exactly the same way as, well, of course, the the Rousseaus are going to make, uh, like, Winter Soldier a major character in the, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he'll definitely be there. That's for sure. Um, That's guaranteed. I, I, you uh, might have I been think... right anyway, but, like, it's that director. <laughs> like, of course. Yeah. Like, you, you, why would you give him crazy superpowers? And then second, I think uh, Falcon Cap is pretty certain. I think they'll want a Captain America on the team. Yes. I think so, too. Uh, and then I, who did I put in the stinking thumbnail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put a couple of surprises uh, in the thumbnail. Um, the new Black Widow, I wasn't really thinking about, or, or the, yeah. or, or, uh, I guess the character that will eventually become the new Black Widow. I guess she's not yet, right? But I can't remember her name right off the top of my head. I liked her in that movie, by the way. Don't love that movie, but I thought she was fine. Yeah, I didn't love. I, I, she came alive a little bit more alive for me in the Hawkeye. Oh, show, she's in but, Hawkeye. She's really good in that. Yeah, that's where I started to to come around on her. But yeah, I think she's gonna be there. I think that's kind of the whole reason to, like, to make that weird backwards back in time Black Widow is to just give us a new Black Widow. Uh, the movie is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I think I think they want a Black Widow on the team. Um, probably She Hulk, depending on where. The, I mean, I think that's why the show exists. I, I think that's going to depend on maybe the popularity of that show. But that's a big question, right? Is like how much it's going to matter who's watching these things and if they pivot decisions yeah. based on that. And maybe that has something to do with why we're waiting as long as we are for Avengers movies. Mm -hmm. To just, I mean, yeah, that's the thing is like if there was an Avengers movie coming out next year, we would know pretty much know the lineup, but it's going to be two years out. It could be it, the landscape could be completely different by then. Yeah. I can tell you who's not going to be there, depending, looking at this list, Spider-Man is nowhere to be seen. Yeah, but it like... It looks like Sony's about to snatch him back. Do you think that'll happen? I don't know. I mean, you, you're you the one who brought up that they set up that last movie perfectly to do so. Yeah, and nobody agrees with me on this because <laughs> Marvel is, you know, like already talking about plans for Spider-Man and stuff, but uh, Tom Holland still has not signed a contract. I saw that today. That's not evidence, necessarily, that he's definitely not coming back. I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm, all I mean is the possibility is still there. He's not signed a contract. Yeah, and I think, um, I guess it depends on wh what the Marvels movie ends up like, but yeah. I think they're probably setting up Miss Marvel to be on the Avengers. I don't know if they're thinking about doing like a younger team, though, like a Young Avengers or... New Avengers, because that's what I would like. I would like her to be with, like, Spider-Man and Human Torch or something. And uh, and the new Hawkeye. Yeah, that'd be cool. Who's awesome. And I like both of those characters, what, what, I've, what I've seen of them. Yeah, yeah. I don't like um, how that show turns, what that show turns into, but she's great all the way through. She, oh, I, good, I, good, good to hear. Yeah, because I liked her a lot. Yeah, I really like her. So her and Hawkeye together would be awesome. And even with all, like, teenage antics and all of that, uh, you know, like sneaking out of her bedroom and going against her parents and stuff like that. Like sometimes that makes a character really unlikable and irritating. And uh, I, I found her as, you know, as sympathetic as I ever do a teenager. Yeah, yeah, she's really charming. And I think it's she doesn't have a lot of experience, which kind of helped in her favor. I don't know, maybe she does, but I thought she was like a new actress. 
yeah. Uh, she seems, you're right. I mean, she seems what behind the ears in all the right way, in all the right ways. Um, okay, so one thing to consider here too, and I alluded to this when I said 170 characters, <laughs> is it looks like we're only going to Avengers movies now. This is the thing I talked to Austin about today uh, for big event things. And Austin is a little bit un upset about that because he wishes we could just, you know, make an Avengers movie uh, that's like, you know, just a fun story and doesn't have to be a big giant event that includes everybody under the sun every time. And I don't care that much. I don't have a big dog in that fight because I'm not a big Avengers guy. I'm not a big a team team guy in the first place. So I personally am kind of okay with if Avengers in the t is in the title, it means the universe. But that, <laughs> or a lot of the universe. Um, but then the question is, I mean, think about the stories that they're telling and adapting, right? So Kang Dynasty, time travel stuff. Um, I don't know very much about the stories that they're probably looking at with that. Uh, there's, I think it's Kurt Busiek uh, wrote a story called Kang Dynasty in the early 2000s, and it's probably going to some of that material. I don't know. And then Secret Wars right after that. So that sounds obviously grand, epic, scope. It's the end of a phase, but it's also the end of a whole saga. So if they're trying to top Endgame in some way, DJ... I'm not even 100% sure that we're going to have, like, a just Avengers roster so much as just a whole bunch of heroes all show up. So, like, with Avengers in the title, you would hope that there's a standing team by that point. And it's kind of weird that we don't have one right now at all. It's like, wh why are they dragging their feet so hard on that? Just in continuity. Like, we haven't had one since Age of Ultron. Yeah. Like, why have... Why isn't anybody going into, like like... I don't know if they've rebuilt the tower or whatever, but, like, why haven't some heroes gotten together and been like, we're going to be the Avengers now? Like, go look at Invincible. Uh, spoilers for that, but, like, <laughs> we, for just the first episode of that, you lose the whole version of their Justice League right away. And then two episodes later, they're amassing a new one. Like, they're going to replace them. And it's really strange that you would have no Avengers team. Like, in the comics, there's like 35 Avengers teams. It's like X-Men, uh, especially modern day. There's like so many, I don't mean 35, but there's, there's so many Avengers teams. You got none, but every other week, there's a new Disney Plus show with a brand new superhero that's getting their own uh, origin story. Yeah, so... They don't have Iron Man to go around and round everybody up, so <laughs> they're just this is madness. <laughs> nobody, nobody else wants, thinks to do it. Nobody wants to take on that responsibility. They got no Iron. They got no Nick Fury. And like, what the heck is he doing? He's in space. He's been. Oh, in that's space. true. He's, He's in space. Home. Yeah, he should have Talos do it. He should have Talos <laughs> pretend to be Nick Fury and go make the next Avengers team. That's going to be the beginning of the next Avengers movie. It's Talos going around like a like a getting the band back together, and he's just riding around and, and recruiting everybody. It's just a series of 20 after credit scenes all in a row at the beginning of that movie where he's like, yeah. you're part of the bigger universe. And then whoever it is you're talking to, like Ironheart or whatever, she's just like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm well aware that I'm in a universe with superheroes. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, Miss Marvel's like, yeah, do you see my room? There's Captain Marvel posters everywhere. So uh, let me try to throw together my five, and again, this is just uh, assuming that there is actually a roster, uh, and that it's not just a whole bunch of superheroes all come together. I think both will happen, especially by Secret Wars. Uh, mm -hmm. And also remember that just before this, we're going to have Fantastic Four. So, like, uh, that that's clearly going to have some cosmic stuff in it, there's no way around that. Uh, yeah. Ant Man, uh, their their next thing is Quantum Mania. Uh, that's gonna have to be related to all of this. So like, there are certain characters just based. It's so, like the five I'm gonna throw out. I'm gonna try to, and I wrote a bunch of, of things down, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out five based on just the premise as we understand it of the stories. DJ uh, characters that have to show up in that movie um, or or have to be part of that team. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp right away. I'll count that is one but like unless they kill one of them off what one or both of them uh has to be in that in that movie because kang is involved somehow in quantum mania it's right there in the title it's going to be related to the uh time travel slash interdimensional stuff america chavez no way she's not connected there she, she's not in that movie and uh that's cool because i like her um I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out in a, a weird outside uh, uh, idea and say that because of uh, 
shows that have been involved in the multiverse thing and, and, and kind of set all of this up, and because of the, and I'm sure Feige's mind, delicious irony of this, I think Loki will be an Avenger. Wow. Yes, I do. I, cause you heard it here first, folks. That set up the Kang thing in the first place. So, like, I either the Loki that's in that show or some version, because we have all these different versions of Loki. Uh, and and also his show is continuing, and we're getting multiple seasons. I think he'll he'll either be an Avenger or he'll fight with them. But I think he'll be an Avenger, and I think they'll do some some whole thing where like Thor once again has no interest in being a superhero, and Loki's like, well, whatever, I'll do it, and then you know, <laughs> then we'll just get another hammer, and we'll you know. You can do anything. Uh, and then Shang Chi, obviously, uh, f for for all the reasons we mentioned earlier, I, I guess I'll throw that as my fourth pick too, just because that's also because of the um, the cosmic stuff there. Because uh, isn't there a scene in that where we kind of finally broached the multiverse in the superhero movies? Uh, I, I mean, in the movies as opposed to just the TV shows. Uh, all the way back in Shang-Chi? Yeah. Like, there's, a, there's a scene at the end where he talks to Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner with his arm in a sling. But No, but before that, that uh, when that place they go to is a, it is an alternate dimension, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? That broaches multiverse in the movies for the first time. That's part of why I, I, I think that for story reasons, he also probably kind of has to be there. Uh, and then one of the the Marvels, if not all of them, because cosmic stuff. So, there's my five. Marvels, um, Marvels, Marvels. But beyond that, so let me show you this uh, article because I was going to start from this place, and then now I'm realizing we don't even really need it. But I'm going to do it anyway. So, <laughs> this guy with a screen rant article said Jordan uh, Ichibuki. It's two C's. Uh, it looks maybe Italian. I'm not sure. Um, I'm so with here, Ichibuki. here are. <laughs> Here are his, his ten predictions. He says, uh, Captain America, you said that, uh, and that's that's pretty obvious. Uh, one, one question I have is, do you think that they'll try to start with a roster? I, I didn't think of this until just now. Do, do you think they, or, or till the show, I should say, do you think, uh, DJ, they might start with a roster where they try to do just, like, stand-ins for the original six? Where they're like, well, we got to have a Captain America. Because we've got them pretty much all now, right? Like, you've got, you're going to have a new Black Widow. You've got She-Hulk. Yeah, and I don't know if she'll be in that, because I don't know how well her show will go. But just if they did this, like, you've got potential stand-ins for all of them. You've got you've got She-Hulk and Black Widow and Captain America and Ironheart and Hawkeye. We just need... That's five. Isn't there a sixth one? Uh, we just need Loki Thor. Oh, yes. Well, and also, Thor is still around. Like, yeah. we don't even know if he's not going to get another movie. So, he, he, we could also just... And Thor. Or they could do Loki instead of Thor. Uh, and again, it'll be that delicious irony thing, right? Because he was the bad guy of the first Avengers movie. And now he's our, our sixth Avenger. Uh, maybe they'll do that. He's, he's Tommy the Green Ranger. <laughs> and he's even green. Perfect. Yeah, he's been evil before. Uh, you know, he's died a bunch of times. Like, Tommy didn't die a bunch of times, but uh, the Green Ranger did in the Sentai. The Green Ranger did, yeah. <laughs> died so many times. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, so let's look at what this guy has to say. Uh, Scarlet Witch is a weird choice. Like, I don't think she's necessarily going to turn out to be dead forever, but uh, the idea that she'll definitely be there is, uh, I don't think... For sure. I think it's just weird that that's second on his list. Like, of everybody else. Okay. Like, maybe. Uh, the street level heroes. Oh, now you're just copping out. Pick one. Pick one. But like you said, I don't think Spider-Man necessarily. Uh, and who knows what Sony's doing. But I, I think, think Daredevil Moon before Moon Knight. And Daredevil was on my list. They're giving him an 18-episode show. And they've already yeah, thrown him in a movie as a cameo. I... Uh, I think there's a really good chance that he's in that movie, uh, if not as an Avenger, as one of the other heroes they all team up with. Yeah, I hope he's, like, running things on the ground while they're fighting, like, Kang's minions. Not, like, I don't want, like, a Batman situation where I'm constantly asking, why is Daredevil here? What, what is he doing? He's just punching aliens. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I like Daredevil. I just don't necessarily need him to be fighting 
I think that's a thing crazy they need, I think that's a thing that they need to really uh, think about and focus on in a way that they weren't able to before because with the limited roster they started with because it was mostly characters that had gotten their own singular movies half the Avengers in in Whedon's first movie didn't have superpowers or at least yeah half the Avengers didn't have superpowers most of the superheroes in the MCU now actually have superpowers which means you've got to be really good at what you do to be an Avenger now and not have powers and they keep amping up the superpowers like Captain Marvel's insanely powerful Shang-Chi is super powerful and Miss Marvel Ms. they Marvel's amped up Miss Marvel a ton yeah she's way more powerful than she is in the comics yeah everybody which I assume is so that she can be an Avenger yeah that's a good point. So also, like, yeah, they're definitely thinking about board. that. But then if you throw Fantastic Hawkeye board. in there again, like like female Hawkeye, it's like, man, you don't have any powers. Like, what are you doing here? You're, you're just as as good at aiming things as the other Hawkeye. Maybe not even quite yeah, as good yet. Hawkeye is the one that gets the pass. Yeah, he gets the... She gets the pass just because she's cool. Like, it's like Batman. Like, Kate Bishop gets to be there. That's going to be the new I'm Batman. <laughs> so I'm Kate Bishop. I'm Hawkeye. Kate Bishop's freaking awesome. So, like, yeah, yeah I, I want her... To be in stuff. I'm with you, though. I wish we could have, like... I'm not a big team movie person, like I've said. And I'm sick, especially on the DC side, of freaking everything has to be a team. But it would be kind of nice if we could, like, have a, a teen team. And now no, no, I'm just going back to... Uh, too invincible again. Uh, but it'd be nice if we could have that, I guess. Uh, but that's clearly not what they're doing. Unless they do a team movie with the teen characters and that's one of the unlisted movies in Phase 6 before they do Avengers, but I don't know if they'll do that. I don't know, maybe so. Or or we could go to different places besides New York, like have a team somewhere else. Like, yeah. Uh, in the comics, uh, Kate Bishop goes to California for a little bit. And Miss Marvel's best friend, spoiler alert for that show, uh, gets a scholarship to go to California for college, so we could be spending some more time in California. Yeah. And from Have the beginning, not all of their characters have been New York-based. Yeah, but they all end up in New York. Uh, so he also has the Sorcerers again, cop out, which ones? I I think probably like almost certainly you have to have america chavez there and i think she'll probably be a big plot point again i think we'll just keep using america chavez even though i like her a lot as a big plot device to make multiverse stuff happen but i also think wong before dr strange and i'm solely saying that because benedict cumberbatch is talking like maybe he wants to take a break or not do it anymore so yeah or he'll just I wait mean... to come back until they do an event again and then he'll be in then yeah, I mean, he, he's got two movies, and they were, like, what, six years apart? He's, uh... God, that's he's crazy. A, he's, he's had a rough... He's had... Yeah, his contract probably... His contract sucks. He's been locked in, and he hasn't really got to do much. Although, I'm... I, he was a decent part of the the last two Big Adventures movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he did do uh, stuff in between. And he was in Spider-Man. Ugh. I know. But he was in that. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> he also says the Hulks, again, which one? Like, maybe both of them. I don't know. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Okay, you don't have to pick there because they come as a, as a package. Uh, and, th <laughs> and then he says Nova because uh, there's been a lot of talk that we're finally going to bring that in. Uh, I like the way he writes this. Many fans were elated to learn that Marvel Studios had finally announced its intention to develop a project centered around the popular comic book superhero Nova. Show of hands, who's a giant Nova fan here? Just, like, really raise them up high. I can't get enough of Nova, man. If you could see the back of this, it's all Nova. <laughs> I mean, like, there are people who like Nova, but to be like... Nova's like, you know, Iron Man or something. All right. Uh, and then Shang-Chi again, of course. Uh, the Marvels. <laughs> the Space Gods. The Space Gods, which there's okay. a lot of them now. That's his 10. Now, one of the questions with the, the Space Gods is if we'll ever see any of the uh, Eternals again, given that it was the second lowest grossing MCU movie of all time. Who knows? Who knows, man? I mean, that doesn't mean they won't show up in other movies. That's what usually happens if, like, if the movies don't perform, they just pull the characters in and use them in other movies, like Hulk. <laughs> I know well, right. I don't know if that's true, though, right? Like, 
I mean, I can't really think of an example where that's really happened, where it's like, well, th- th- like, this movie wasn't real popular, so we'll take that character and throw them in other things. I think we, we kind of just ignore the, the things that don't go that well in in most other properties. But the problem is most of Marvel's been successful, so there's not really a lot of precedent set with those. Yeah. Well, I know that when tw- in 2016, when... when um... Doctor Strange came out, it felt like, oh, we just needed to give this guy a movie so we could use him in the Avengers movies. Like, we we wanted to use Doctor Strange, but we felt like we had to give him an origin story, so we just shoved it out, and then we pulled him into the universe. Kind of same thing we did with Spider-Man. Although he kept getting movies, because that was Sony. That's true, but what you're talking about is kind of the inverse of that, where it's like, we made a movie to actually just do a movie with Eternals, and then yeah. not a lot of people really cared for that, because it, it wasn't successful critically or commercially, and so do you think they might just shelve those characters in time or maybe have like a token one where it's like, I've been seeing a lot of that where it's like, well, we'll take the the closest to a breakout character in that and it, it yeah. would be either Icarus or Cersei probably and then put one or both of them in a movie and then you'd never hear from anybody else ever again. Or that, uh, I can't remember his name, uh, the comedian guy because he keeps showing up at everything just cause, or does he die in that? I've seen that movie one time and I can't remember who, who comes out at the end. I'd play... Well, I think Icarus dies. Oh, Icarus does die. Well, then why am I seeing people saying that maybe he'll be in that movie? I don't know. I, It's a three-hour film I saw one time, and it has <laughs> ten characters. I mean, like, it had a larger cast than Avengers. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, to your point, the ending of that was totally set up for, like, a sequel to that alone. Like, it was creating its own pocket, so it wasn't really trying to tie. Plus like, the end of Sean Blade? Sh- <laughs> yeah what were you gonna say about shang chi i was gonna say at the end of shang chi we're like oh he's gonna be an avenger he's talk he's literally talking to captain marvel and hulk like see what's happening see what we're doing here but like with eternals it was completely different like it was its own thing in yeah. space no one was no one even knew about it so no one can hear yeah. you scream because there's too many avengers and you're <laughs> you're completely overwhelmed your brain's gonna explode no one can hear you scream when a gigantic space god sucks you all up into space at the end. It's a cliffhanger. So I have a question about this article. Where's Black Panther? Oh yeah, what a weird, what a weird oversight. Isn't it very strange not to write like the Wakandans? <laughs> yeah, well that yeah, it's exactly what he should. Yeah, uh, given his other picks. We know from that teaser, there's gonna be somebody in the Black Panther costume by the end of that movie, and. By the way, I haven't talked about this yet. Uh, I kept assuming that it must be Shuri, and I still think, of course, that's the most likely possibility, but um, I've heard the suggestion that they could go left, field, sort of left field, and it's a Koye instead, and I would actually be fine with that if that's what they did. Uh, I, could, I could see it either direction, and more people like her because Shuri is somewhat polarizing. Uh, I know a lot of people find her really irritating. I like her. It's whatever, uh, but... I, I could I could really see it actually going that other way, and I didn't think of that before. Uh, but yeah, whoever's in the Black Panther costume is in that movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't care what direction they go as long as they make it work. I, I could see anyone in there. Put <laughs> uh, put a Baku in there, sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I've had that thought too. You have to retailor the Black suit Panther. just a little bit. Yeah, oh, it's just nanobots at this point anyway. <laughs> I was gonna say it's <laughs> one size fits all because it's not even the size; it's nanobots. Yeah, I hope they go more back to a traditional costume. I really didn't like the costume in the movie. I liked it much better in Civil War. Um, Before it was all purple. Let me throw out a couple other things real quick. Uh, because of Armor Wars, I think you'll see Rhodey in that movie. And I think at least a Fantastic Four member is likely to be involved, at least by the Secret Wars section, uh, if not as an Avenger, just there and probably Reed. Although... In, in like, 70s and 80s comics, we had we had Thing palling around with other teams a lot. So, like, I could see that, too, depending on what they do with him. But, uh... Because, like, now we have to speculate about characters they haven't even put on screen yet. So, like, I, I don't know, I don't know uh, what they're going to be like or who's going to be breakout, who people are going to care about. I'm also predicting Rocket Raccoon will be an Avenger. That would be insane. Um... And part of the reason I'm saying that we is... We have Guardians we, 3. Oh, say it again? We have Guardians 3 pretty soon, 2023. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the Christmas special this year. Oh, wow. 
I'm so out of the loop, by the way. You sending me this and me looking at it right now is the first I've heard of any of the announcements of Phase 5 <laughs> and 6. I'm just like looking at all these logos like, oh, that's pretty cool. Some like of this spider. I didn't know about until today, to be honest with you. I didn't keep up real hard either, and I had to do some homework earlier today. But, uh, yeah, Rocket, I, I say partly just because he's a big breakout character, and partly because he was, like, intimately involved with... Uh, what the Avengers were doing during the blip, if you'll recall, in Endgame, uh, toward the beginning of that. Like, he's he's helping run, in, run point between the Earth Avengers and Captain Marvel and all of that. And so, like, they like they know him pretty well now and stuff. So like he's the closest to weirdly uh being being what he is. Uh he, he's he's the closest to an Avenger the Guardians have gotten. I think yeah. he might be an Avenger. Everyone like everyone jumped in the chat when you said that and said he's probably going to die in Guardians 3. <laughs> Well, like, I was going to say... So many people. Unless he dies in three... Yeah, because I had that thought. I think they'll kill somebody in that movie. Uh, but if he doesn't die in that, I, I predict he'll be an Avenger. They'll just kill new Gamora again. Also, I'm wrong all the time. Anyway, <laughs> uh, DJ, let's go ahead and... Go, unless you have uh, more characters you want to throw out. No, no, we've thrown out everything like so many characters good grief i don't feel like we've scratched the surface yet there's a lot there's a lot of stuff to talk about and i'm sorry if i dominated this really hard dj i just i i, I wrote a big list and uh suddenly my imagination kind of ran away with itself and no uh, absolutely i enjoyed it um yeah it's it's fun to speculate about this stuff i don't usually do the speculation thing so i'm enjoying it well why don't we go to the proverbial phones eventually we'll bring back the actual phones but tonight Literal phones we're, yeah, we're just going to do uh, the, the, the chat, so uh, feel free to go wherever you want to, pre-written Super Chats, and uh, we'll, at this point, folks, feel free to ask about anything you want to, of course, related to this topic or otherwise, and remember that uh, Super Chats guarantee that we talk about your topic. Go ahead. All right, $10, Damian Wade. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, hold on, hold oh. on. I totally forgot to do a thing at the beginning, which is to say... Sorry, I have to do a quick commercial and oh, okay. say... Uh, so, if you missed the uh, the original commercial a couple weeks for this, uh, we do have Geek Flution t-shirts again. And uh, right now, they are once again on sale for $14. Uh, they went to regular price all last week, but now they're on sale again. And I, I have nothing to do with this, by the way. It's just Tee Public when they decide to run a sale. So I want to let you guys know when Tee Public runs a sale, because it means my stuff is on sale. And uh, the first person tonight that buys a t-shirt during the show, and I'll get an email, so I'll see the timestamp when it happens. If you buy a t-shirt during the show and you're the first one to do it, you will get a uh, request on the queue. Uh, oh. So it'll take me three to four months to get to it because we have a queue and we do them weekly. Uh, but I will put a request for you for a movie, a comic, or a, um, uh, a pilot for a TV show like I usually would if you join the $15 tier on Patreon. All you have to do is buy a t-shirt and you'll get a request on the queue. So, uh, but just but just the first person who does it will get that this evening. Anyway, sorry, I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that before I forgot. All right, hold on, I'll be right with you. Just buying something unrelated, not buying a t-shirt. Uh... <laughs> uh, DJ, you're excluded from this deal. Oh, disqualified just because I'm a mod? You already have a request and I still haven't done it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I even changed it to something that I thought you would like to do more. Oh, oh right. people so are depressing me in super chats. Anyway, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get so to depressed. Damien Wade. Hi. Ten dollars and a. Is that Australian money? No, Australian music says a a w a u s. I don't know what a is, but uh, he says with all the excitement about the MCU's future, what is the most exciting announcement? And why is it the unpublished Ultimate Spider-Man videos going up on Patreon? <laughs> I like how you slipped that in there. I'm what? not prom I'm not promising that. Okay, I'm just I'm just not. Um, also, but... that would be the most exciting thing for you. No, no, and I mean, like, I'm flattered for anybody. Chap likes we... to hear himself talk, but he's, that's not, he's not that excited about it's it. It's true. It's true. It's why I do this twice a week now. I just cannot get enough of the sound of my own voice. No, um. I am flattered that that might be more interesting to you than anything that Marvel has announced for Phase 5 or 6. But, uh, 
but I cannot promise that at this time. And that's all I'll say about that right now. Uh, at some point, I want to get back to that in some capacity. Uh, but for all the reasons I've explained before, I'm not going to currently promise that. As far as the actual Marvel things and what I'm uh, most excited to see, uh, at the moment, it is probably Fantastic Four, because I've wanted that forever, and I'm just really curious to see how they will handle that and if Galactus is there, because it's all I want out of life is Silver Surfer and Galactus. Uh, Although, so this that's another thing I was thinking the entire time watching Miss Marvel is like, wow, the, the Fantastic Four are going to be really unimpressive now that Miss Marvel has like almost all of their powers in one and she's been doing it like the whole, like she jumps around on force fields. She makes force fields around herself. She stretches really far. Like she has all of their powers except for fire. That's a good point. And isn't it, man, I didn't even think of that. Isn't it, so she's basically the super scroll? <laughs> oh, that's what I thought during the thing. There's, there's a part where she like gets really big hands and feet and gets like the force fields around her. And she's basically looks like super scroll. It's hilarious. Man, I don't know what they were thinking with that. Like, I could see yeah, it I... if they couldn't get the rights to Fantastic Four. Be like, oh, I see what you did there. You just gave her all the Fantastic Four powers. Minus fire. Um, but yeah, and then, by the same token, isn't it also uh, kind of sad that so much of the cosmic side of Marvel has already been brought up before we get to Fantastic Four? So we're not going to be able to introduce all that much of it with them besides Silver Surfer and Galactus, which are, you know, the big ones for me, of course. But by the time you get to that, I, I'm looking at this from the perspective of audience members that might not be familiar with those characters and are getting them in the order that they're getting them in MCU. Silver Surfer and Galactus are probably not, like, as exciting or impressive after umpteen other, like, cosmic threats and space threats like oh especially you already had dormammu and now galactus you know and like you, you know you've already you've already had like ego the living planet you know and now galactus like <laughs> yeah i mean that, that that thing at the end of eternals is basically galactus it's like just giant thing just standing in space like somehow like galactus does like yeah, and I mean, I've always thought that those look kind of similar. Like, that is its own thing. It also comes from comics. It's not like they made that up, and it sort of looks like Galactus, but yeah. you're right. I don't, want, I don't want people to be introduced. I don't want people in the mainstream to get that first, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh. I can't so, remember so, his name right now, but anyway. Anyway, what is your... So, you, so your Fantastic Four for you. Yeah, and then second to that, as far as stuff coming out more... Uh, uh, sooner? I don't know why I couldn't think of the word. I was like, um, things coming out before that? Uh, I'm... I am cautiously optimistic and a little bit nervous about it, of course, but Daredevil getting 18 episodes, man. That's like, crazy. That's huge. That's that's the thing I'm most curious about. It's got to be like about, procedural, if nothing else. right? Like, it can't be one and, story. And that's what I want it to be, so, like, I'm my, my ears perked up more at that episode count. And you'd think, considering the way I complain about the Netflix shows, I'd be like, oh, God, 18. But, like, they keep putting out six to eight to ten episode miniseries that feel like two-hour movies stretch too far. If they announce 18, I'm actually more excited because they probably sort of know what they're doing if they're going to say 18. Yeah, that's... Or at least I would hope so. That's confidence right there. Yeah. Free broadcast stuff doesn't get 18 anymore. That's an astronomical number. You might as well have announced two seasons at the same time. That's crazy. It's what? crazy. What are they doing? Uh. Uh, Darth Boba says expect a lot of filler for Daredevil, but I'm fine with that if the stories are good. Like, I want it to be like the like the Bendis run, where you, you've got, like, overarching stuff that, like, you know, really matters, and maybe there is a whole seven or eight to ten episodes of overarching story throughout, but then occasionally he just has to go uh, solve a crime. Uh, yeah. he, he has to go be a detective. Uh, maybe there's a whole episode in a courtroom. Wouldn't that be even, wonderful? Even the Wade run. Like, he, there's a lot of stuff going on over the whole thing, but and then, but he'll also just be in a school bus with a bunch of blind kids and get in a car accident and has to oh, lead I all the blind kids that. Yeah. Back, to the, back to the civilization. That was a great, episode, or yeah. a great issue. Well, and a lot of the best Daredevil issues are single issue uh stories right and and like that's how miller that's even how miller wrote his run where he's got you know like a real complex several issue story happening but then 
we stop everything for that famous, uh, like, Russian roulette issue? Like, I'd love to see that as an, as an episode. Like, there's all kinds of stuff that you could do. So, yeah, I'm more excited to hear that. And then watch it just be one story stretched to 18 episodes, and I'm, like, crying. But hopefully, hopefully that's <laughs> no, not it's like doing. Iron Fist levels of decompressed. <laughs> Wouldn't that be insane? <laughs> Gosh, that'd be horrible. I'm trying to, we, we really didn't learn anything from Netflix. Oh, man. We went, oh, Daredevil, everybody wants the Netflix show. We better, ma- we better make it that, but five more episodes. We can out Netflix Netflix. <laughs> uh, I think for me, the thing I'm, and this might say something about how not excited I am for this phase, or phases, uh, I think Spider-Man freshman year is the one that's like I'm kind of most interested in right now. Sure. And you have to wait till the end of 2024 for that, by the way, or maybe the, be- maybe the beginning of it, I forget. But but finding out that it's not like in continuity and they're like doing other things that that was, I I got excited about that because at first when we first heard about it they're like oh it's like it's just gonna show you like before Homecoming or whatever and we were like oh that sounds horrible but now that it's just like a Spider Man show, great and, and I need a Spider Man show yeah they've unveiled concept designs that look like Ditko and some of the costumes are classic yes. some of them aren't but some of them are and that's cool uh let's look at this list again so. Two of these things aren't like the others, and I'm basically just complaining about the way Tech Radar wrote this, but I don't know if MCU is, like, talking about it this way, or if it's just... Austin Austin and I talked about this today, and he called it maybe bad journalism. Okay, so, the full Marvel Phase 5 lineup. On the Phase 5 lineup is X-Men 97. Not MCU. Nope. And Spider-Man Freshman Year, which is ostensibly not MCU. Now, they could be going, oh, but, you know, they're in alternate realities that will somehow in their shows connect and make clear that they're in the same multiverse, even if they don't do a big story about that. Which I don't need, but if they feel the need to do that just to create synergy, whatever. But, like, until we get that, DJ, those two things should not be in the Phase 5 lineup, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I and I would I would say what if shouldn't be either, but I hear that like the first season of what if wrapped everything up and like tried to connect it. So I guess that makes sense. It did, but I also sort of get why they're why they've been putting those in the phases because they are MCU. Like they're they're altered yeah. dimensions, but they're based on MCU stories. I mean, it's it's what if for those movies. So yeah, that, well, that's also, also that's Marvel fine. Zombies. Yeah, but Marvel, Marvel Zombies, Zombies be is a spinoff, but Marvel Zombies is a spinoff of What If, which in and of itself is an MCU connected thing. So like I mm-hmm. get, so I sort of get that. I'm with you. I kind of don't love either of those there either, but I understand them more than X Men ninety seven. X Men ninety seven makes no sense. That makes no sense. Maybe X Men ninety seven will uh, will be like Buzz Lightyear, and it'll be a cartoon that they're watching in universe. And then eventually the people that made it or, or, or the, like the like the studio will decide they hate it and disown it. And then they'll make like a 3D version that everybody hates because it's not as good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, no X-Men on this list, which uh, is th- th- that's got to be one of the like unreleased titles, right? Something to do with mutants. So it all depends. Uh, th- this is another thing that I found out about from Austin today. Uh, apparently, and I don't have a source for this, um, I don't think, I don't think he sent me an article about it, so, grain of salt with this, I'm not citing a source on this, uh, this is completely hearsay, but what I heard was that apparently, uh, X-Men, the, the only reason that Feige didn't greenlight X-Men stuff earlier is because in the, and this makes so much sense, DJ, because it was really weird that they waited as long as they have, apparently in the buyout, there was a clause with the contracts that said that if they made anything X-Men up until a certain year, and Austin couldn't remember if it was 2025 or the next year, which would explain why we don't have it through Phase 6, um, had to be made with the consultation of the producers of the previous franchise, which would mean that Kinsberg would have to be involved and Singer would have to be involved. And apparently that's why they haven't been making X-Men movies yet. They're waiting for that to dry up. Oh, interesting. And that makes perfect sense because if I'm them, 
regardless of whether you could get those guys to be amenable and be okay with getting away from their old franchise and all of that, I wouldn't want them involved. I wouldn't want the previous, whoever they were, I wouldn't want the old guard involved in a reboot. Like, that was the big mistake with Man of Steel, is like, we didn't give it to new people. Yeah. Oh, well. Someday, mutants. <laughs> Thomas Lowe says objection hearsay. <laughs> Uh, but Mitali and Adam March both say 25, which suggests that they've also read this, even if it's hearsay. Jeez. Uh, so if There's somebody a has a source uh, and you can bring that to my attention, let me know. Because, uh, you know, I hate to just talk out of the other side of my face, but that's what I heard. So, yeah. Yeah. There's a goofy line at the end of Miss Marvel that made me think they were trying to get that going a lot faster. But if it's not till 2025, I don't know what that was then. Well, and they might just be... Uh, it also might be a thing where the, the loophole is we have the rights to certain ideas and characters, and they don't have to be involved unless we make an X-Men movie. You know what I mean? So, like, we could start mm -hmm. doing mutants and stuff, but we just can't have X-Men movies or X-Men characters, like, big ones. I don't know. Adam March says, and wouldn't some of the cast need to be involved, too? I had not heard that, but if that's the case, they really should have should be doing what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, we've only done one. Oh, chat plus you do, the X says, supposedly the contract also applies to the actors as well. Weird. What a weird contract. Like, the, you have to use certain actors. Usually you have, like, the right to pick whatever actors you want to. That's very strange. Well, phase seven. <laughs> I hope, you, you, you know what, you know what, you know what I hope happens? I'm saying this somewhat facetiously. I hope just because they weren't allowed to do X-Men for all this time, when we get into Phase 7, it turns into the Mutant Saga. <laughs> yeah. Just the Mutant Saga. Just three whole X-Men phases. And actually, uh, for for the sake of poetic justice, it should be the Sinister Saga, right? <laughs> that sounds pretty good. That has a nice ring to it. We had all these X-Men movies that kept, like... Hinting at Sinister, dropping the name Essex. We went to his house, we saw his name on a briefcase. And then we never ever had him. And then Phase 7, the beginning of the long-awaited Sinister Saga. <laughs> uh, yeah, they do like a big press conference at a convention. Like, we know you've all been waiting for Sinister. You know, I gotta stop everything for a second and say, I just, just to reiterate something I said at the beginning of the show... I have had phases where I am just sick to death of talking about MCU. Like, a few years ago, I went to uh, New Hampshire and hung out with Dan Torrey. And we did a bunch of live shows and videos because he wanted to shoot the whole time I was there. I was like, I'm on vacation. Why are you making me work? He's like, no, this is fun for me. We're shooting things. I'm like, all right. <laughs> we talked about all kinds of things. And uh, we, we kept talking about Marvel. And at one point, he was like, Okay, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do a, like a long live stream tonight, but but uh, I'm really sick of Marvel, and I was like, well, let's call it the not MCU show, and we avoided MCU the entire night, and it's just interesting how your your perspective can can be different in different kinds of contexts, because I got so tired of Zaslav <laughs> that this is really refreshing. Like I've been Zaslav saves the MCU. I've been really enjoying this show and I'm so burnt out on MCU but tonight just talking about it I, I don't feel as burnt out at least talking about it I don't know this has been fun also I think part of the reason it's been fun is because as much as I think it's ridiculous that they've got these they, they always drop a thousand names of projects at once and they just blow your brain up and you can't keep track of everything and all of that there's like I'm still worried about quantity over quality Again, Zaslav should be Zaslav. doing this because because he is all about quality. But um, I uh, I'm I'm looking at all of these projects and going, okay, but there could be a lot of variety and different kinds of things moving forward. Like there are some characters that they're about to start adding that I'm I'm kind of excited to see what they do with, and, and again, especially Fantastic Four and characters they're bringing back that I hope that they can you know manage to do okay, like Daredevil. So I don't know. Like suddenly this is more fun again. At least right now. At least tonight. In the like right now in the moment, I do not feel as burnt out as I did. No, oh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun too. I mean, it's been a while. I've been you know taking it easy on MCU. We haven't done Marvel Mania in a. Has it been almost two years now? Good since three. what now? How long have we been since we did Marvel Mania? When was that? Holy last year? crap! I think maybe it has been almost that long. A year and a half, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, somebody on a show the other so, day. Yeah. 
uh, asked me if, or last night, I think, uh, on a completely unrelated thing, uh, somebody left a comment and we talked about it and was like, uh, when are you going to bring back Marvel Mania? And I said, we just don't know yet. Um, we, we, we definitely want a few more projects to happen. But the question, the, the big thing with DJ and I right now is just what exactly are we tackling? Uh, because the way they're describing the phases, like all the TV shows count and everything, and it, like we have not been loving a lot of those and it might be a slog to have to sit through them all together and it might be no fun for you guys especially if you like some of those and we don't so i'm, I'm not saying i'll only talk about things that i like obviously but like i don't know if it's 15 things in a row where i'm just like punching the screen <laughs> yeah i think i mean it's funny right because we we have both of us have been like uh, i don't know about marvel mania phase three and then uh but right now like tonight specifically, I'm like, oh, I, I kind of, I kind of miss Marvel Mania. Yeah. I, I, if you, if you ask me right now, I'd be like, well, let's do it next week. But uh, who knows, you know, if we'll still be in the mood. And then after two episodes, you'll be like, you know what? <laughs> You're not paying me enough for this. I'm gonna need, uh, I, I'm gonna need you to pick another co-host. Uh, I, I definitely want to do a, a third wave of that. Uh, but I just can't promise you if it will include the Disney Plus shows or if we might pick and choose them a little bit. Um, but then if we do that, people will cry foul that their favorite show didn't get picked. If we pick movies and don't do that, we can get away with that. We just, look, we're just doing, it's always been movies, we're just doing movies. But if we do that, we're going to have to wait probably a couple of years. Although, with this lineup, we don't have to wait as long as we thought we did. <laughs> it's true. I mean, we've already got a ton. Uh, just from the last two years. Well, especially if all you did, especially if you included the Disney Plus shows. If you were just doing movies, though, you still would have to wait. Because we right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'd only yeah. have like six movies probably, right? Yeah. If that, probably. what would it be? Black Widow. Black Widow, Shang-Chi, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, Eternals. So yeah, five or six. Five or six. And then but you've got other stuff. You've got Morbius. You've got Venom. You've got... Oh, that's true. That's true. You have other things that would make... Well, you see me punch my screen a lot, even right now. Venom 2? <laughs> oh, I want to do that one blindfolded. I... Ugh, I hate it. I hate it with a burning passion. I don't even mind just straight up saying I hate that movie. <laughs> I think I hate it more than Morbius. And Morbius is terrible. I don't even think it's... I don't think Morbius is better than that movie. I just hate it more. I really do. Anyway. I, I totally understand, man. I still haven't seen it. More. Don't get me wrong, Morbius is stupid. <laughs> Morbius is I hate stupid. it more, sir. I hate it more, sir. Uh, I liked this comment a lot, if I can find it again. Uh, <laughs> Robert Wilde. Good going, dude. He goes, and where is Mr. Sinister? He's at home, washing his tights. Brilliant. Brilliant, sir. Anyway, all right, moving right along. That reminded me. I had I had a recruiter reach out to me today on LinkedIn asking me if I wanted to be a lead designer on their team that creates super suits. And I was like, uh, please send me more information. What are you talking about? What? So that's what she told me. I need to I need to follow up and get some more information. But uh Oh my sad. god, that's awesome. Very intriguing. That sounds like a match made in heaven. <laughs> And then you'll be like, you'll you'll never you'll never believe uh, what what I do to moonlight after my job. <laughs> no capes, Roger. <laughs> we have, we've only asked, answered one super chat. Is it time. possible that she went to your website and saw all the superhero stuff that you've done for us? And maybe like positioned her offer that way because of it. I don't know. I mean, they definitely go to my website before they ask me. That's what everyone does because it's linked on LinkedIn. But I'm saying if it's like specifically superhero related, I don't know what super suits means. I think it's like I don't think it actually is superhero related. Oh. I think it's like, um, like biometric, like for fitness and like, I don't know. I'm picturing like the things that they wear in Ready Player One, like some kind of super, oh. like tracks tracks all of your movements and something. But uh, do you do you call... want to be the lead designer for that? I don't know. I need to get more information. I'll let you know. I'll follow up. <laughs> Okay, but there's no reason you couldn't put a bat symbol in the middle of one of those. Like that's true. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to make a, make some tweaks. Sounds awesome. <laughs> All right, Roger Lee, another ten dollars. Yeah, thank you so uh, much. What's up? Hey, Cap, Top Gun Maverick finally available for digital purchase on August twenty third. You and the misses can finally see it. This after making another seven dollar, or this after making another seven million dollars and finishing second at the box office in its twelfth week. Is it still in the theater? 
Yes, it is. Like, if it's still possible to go to the theater, I might still try to figure that out. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I I will review that when I can when I can get to it. I honestly keep forgetting about it now, but yeah. Um, I, I like like I said before, I was waiting for Sarah. Um, but I I don't I don't like to pay like fifteen twenty dollars for digital DJ like. Yeah. Yeah. And you can say, oh, well, what would you pay if you went to the theater? And I'll say, well, Sarah's never available to go with me. And I'd have to go by myself. And I go to a theater that's like five and a half dollars. So, <laughs> you know, I don't pay a lot of money to go to the theater. And I don't feel like I have to see everything in the theater anymore. So, you know, I don't mean to be cheap. And I appreciate your $20 worth of Super Chats. No doubt saying, look, here's some money. Watch this movie. I'll try to do it in the not too distant future. I appreciate it, man. Some of it, some of it just becomes like the principle of the thing, you know. It's not like oh, I'm cheap. I can't afford it. It's like I don't I don't like the digital having to pay twenty dollars just because the thing just came out. You know, like yeah, I don't like I, it. I understand. Like I'll buy the movie before that. Like I, like at the very least, I would I would have to wait until it came out on physical because if it's that good, I'd probably want to own it anyway. It's like I'm not gonna pay twenty dollars to watch it digitally and then later buy the Blu-ray for twenty five dollars. Yeah, totally. Uh, Cap, you're so cheap. Just spend the money. Watch the damn movie. <laughs> uh, I can't Shania. believe somebody put that in a super chat. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, DJ. Ian, Ian Chandler, $5. Hi. To jump away from games and movies, this is for both of you. Yeah. What fantasy or sci-fi novel do you think is an absolute must-read for anyone? Ooh. <whistles> A fantasy or science fiction. My go-to is always Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's always my, my, my standby go-to. It's just it's such a huge influence for my work and in my life in general. Uh, I can try to think of another answer you haven't heard me say before, but uh, DJ, give me a fantasy choice. Oof. It's been so long since I've read. I used to read a lot of fantasy when I was little. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's my thinking hum. Think, think. And think, tonight think. on The Singing Saw, <laughs> DJ Martinez. Um, I know I would have to do this, uh, for Eric's sake, but, um, because we used to talk about this franchise, there's a franchise called Dragonlance, uh, yeah. that is, um, it's, it's kind of what that Dungeons and Dragons animated movie was based on. Uh, it's like a trilogy. It's like Dragons of Autumn Twilight, Dragons of Winter Night, Dragons of Spring Dawning, I think is what the, the trilogy is. Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Uh, it is what I love about fantasy. The reason I used to read all the fantasy books is that you just got like a ragtag team of different races. You got usually got like an elf and a dwarf and whatever their equivalent of a hobbit is. And this, it was called a, oh my gosh, I can't even remember, but it was, it was Tasselhoff. And, uh, you got a wizard, you got like, you just got a fun little group and they're just like, it's like road trip movies. You're just like traveling, going from you got some kind of overarching quest that you're trying to do, but mostly you're just going through different locations and getting caught in different adventures. It's why I like the first Hobbit movie, even though those got bloated and like completely blown out of proportion. And I wish they would have done them much uh, smaller, but that first one is just like an adventure. And it's, I, I, I just love the, that whole, that whole feel just like, Oh, we're fighting trolls now. Oh, we're going on a different, we're, there's stone creatures and now we're getting barrels and now we're going down and there's a dragon like that, that we don't have that in film. We never have like, I mean, we have here and there, but like, that's just a genre that I really like. Like people like road trip movies. People like magic. Just put, put it together. How hard is it? Come on. <laughs> well, sometimes less really is more. <laughs> yeah. Just give me some fun characters that I want to hang out with in the forest. It's fun. No, but DJ, if I can't make a six hour analysis video about it, it's not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> oh, people still can. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a really good point. Yeah. Including myself. I can do that with anything, apparently. <laughs> so, I uh, science fiction, I will throw uh, a couple of things at you. Uh, a a uh, real mainstream classic thing that everybody should read, and then something a little bit more off the beaten path, maybe. Uh, I'll start with uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? 
the book that Blade Runner is based on, uh, which is very, very different from Blade Runner, despite the fact that when that movie came out, that uh, Philip K. Dick novel was re-released under the title Blade Runner with Harrison Ford on the front. It's nonsense, and I hate that, uh, because it was based on just... Blade Runner was based on just a thing that happens in that book, not the whole book. It's very different. It, it's, it's a lot like... What happened with iRobot, which is, of course, another book that I would recommend, uh, Asimov, where there's uh, there's kind of the central idea of that book and maybe a, a, an idea or two or, or a story point or two that come from the vignettes in that. But, like, iRobot is a book of short stories that are all, like, loosely connected by a bookend. And then, once again, that book gets re-released when the Will Smith comes movie comes out called iRobot with Will Smith on the cover. I'm like, no, you can't do that. Uh, now it's just an advertisement. Buy this book to make you think to go buy a ticket uh, to the movie. But anyway, so uh, do androids dream of electric sheep? Uh, I would also recommend a... Because uh, you went to a popular series, so I'll go to a popular series. Or a, a what one... one once was a popular series, several, several books. I've only ever read the first, but I really loved it, and I want to go back to it at some point. Um, nobody will expect me to say this. William Shatner's Tech War. Uh, wow. And, and William Shatner ghost wrote this book. Uh, it, it, it is great because he probably had very little to do with it at all. Uh, William Shatner starred in a short-lived television version of it, which I've never seen, and uh, it is about addiction, and uh, it's futuristic, and it's uh, very interesting, and I haven't read it in a long time, so I can't speak much to it now. Uh, I own that whole series now, I think, because I got it with a Star Trek collection I bought out a couple years ago, and I want to start reading through that, because I have them all, or at least I have most of them in pristine paperback, too. Really pretty. And then uh, I would also... Uh, recommend a science fiction book by one of my favorite authors that people don't think enough as a science fiction author, but they should, Stephen King, who wrote The Running Man and also Firestarter. Uh, both of those should be considered, uh, at this point, classic science fiction novels. Uh, and they're not because it's Stephen King, so everybody kind of groups them into horror, and there are horror elements, but they're very, very good science fiction novels. So anyway, those are some things that I would throw at you. That was fun. I never get to talk about books, and I don't read enough anymore. So uh, thanks for making me get back into the well in yeah, the back we of my really mind. Plunge into the depths of our memory for that one. My I mental file cap. I got completely off track and forgot what the question was, and started talking about movies again. I didn't even name. It, it's called Dragonlance Chronicles. Is the name of that trilogy, by the way. Uh, moving on. Great question, Ian. Uh, Great question. Senior sticks. Two dollars. Uh, let hope. For a, let's hope for a successful Sony and Valiant verse. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I don't know how to do anything but laugh at that. <laughs> he doesn't I, know how to hope. It would be it would be cool, I guess, if they can make a shared Valiant universe that anybody would care about. I just I don't I don't see it. Uh, where it's like, oh, these are some characters we have the rights to that very little in in the. Uh, very few people really know about in the mainstream. I mean, I'm saying that there have obviously been some really successful in the mainstream, little known superhero things that have done very well, like Invincible, like The Boys. Uh, I wish The Tick was in that list. God bless America. Uh, but it just makes me mad. If The Tick had come after those it two shows, it would Rogen. still be on. If only Seth, Seth Rogen would, would work on it, then it would be fine. Uh, so yeah, when you say let's hope, I mean, I don't have a dog in that. I guess, like, like I'm not itching to see the Valiant universe, like, like that's got to be successful, I'm gonna be really sad. Uh, but, if it is, if it is, then, uh, I hope the movies are good, and, uh, I hope I can get into them, that would be wonderful. Uh, is Valiant, is Ninjak part of Valiant? I think it is. <laughs> I hope so. I think and it I hope is. he gets a movie with Morbius. I want, I want a movie. Ninjak and Morbius. Well, that's the other thing, is it being a Sony, I guess I don't hold out a lot of hope for the quality. Look, Zaslav's not there, okay? So you can't expect quality. Well, after he saves the DCU, then he's going to hop over to the SU. He is. He's, <laughs> he's going to be uh, SU. Stands for Sony, stands for Spider-Man, stands for shared universe without Spider-Man in it. SU. It's S-cubed. S-cubed. S-cubed you. Yeah. It could be the SMU, the Sony Multiverse, or that's V. Okay, but are they gonna are they gonna mix Valiant with Venom and Valiant. Craven the Hunter? 
Oh yeah, Craven. Ninjak Craven versus Craven. Craven the Hunter. There you go. That's a better team up. Anyway, I can't remember if that's Valiant. Moving right along. Next up, we've got Snope Senior Sticks. Roger Lee, five dollars. Yeah. Three days ago was the sixth anniversary of Amazon's The Tick. Oh, Long can sigh. That? Can you believe that? I can't believe that. That's crazy. I feel like I just watched season two. And it got two seasons within like three years. That's the thing is it's been a while since it went off the air, but it sat around in limbo while it was still in production. Like, do you know how long it was between the pilot that they aired and the first half of the first season? It was like a year and a half. Well, yeah, because they did that weird thing where like, hey, we're going to air the pilots and then pick one uh, instead of doing that like behind the scenes. Well, they had their viewers take a vote and then they greenlit all of them anyway. Yeah. Or at least two of the three. I can't remember. Yeah, they're like, oh, wow, people are really interested in all these. We'll just make them all, and then we'll cancel them all. Yeah. That's what happened. I heard recently that the reason that the... uh, This is so sad. that The suit sucks in the pilot is because they had shipping problems, and they just couldn't get, like, the actual suit shipped over. Like, I think they'd already built a better one, and I think they might... They maybe even retooled it for the rest of the season by the time they got to start shooting. So they had time. Uh, But I think they had to take a stunt suit and pretend like it was the real suit. Weird. But it looks so different. Like, it's a different color. I I don't... I don't entirely... Or maybe it was like a prototype thing where, like, they weren't finished with it. I I don't know. It's just so weird that they had the Arthur suit, but they they, they didn't have that. I don't know the full story with that. Again, I don't have a a source. I read that somewhere the other day. I can't remember uh, what the details are with that. So, again, grain of salt. Don't don't know how true that is. Didn't expect this to come up, but... And that also totally sounds like something that makes sense, which means that someone could easily just make it up because it sounds right (laughs) and, like tell you yeah but yeah but, you're uh, right that suit was so dim- but like apparently like ben color. edlin went on the record and was like yeah we were really embarrassed about that like ha- <laughs> like having to use that it sucked but it was like you know we've got our call times everybody's here we're wasting money we have to shoot something yeah that's crazy it's crazy just from shipping like even saban could get the the, the thing shipped all the way from japan the suits yeah well, he couldn't get everything. That's why Tommy's got that scrunched up like <laughs> piece of foam on top of the Green Ranger suit. That's true. It's very true. Uh, but anyway, the second half of that question, he yeah. says, uh, speaking of great shows, Cap, are you caught up on more on the Orville? I'm still not. No, I've been working on it. So it's request month. I'm not watching stuff for me right now, um, like, uh, besides things for review. So I, I'm doing two requests a week right now uh, for request month, and then uh, I'm doing Invincible with the the, the full season uh, discussion with Connor on Sunday. So I've been preparing for that. Uh, I finished watching that season. I'm probably going to try to rewatch at least some of those episodes before Sunday so that it's more fresh in my mind and I can talk more clearly about it uh so anyway yeah that's that's what i'm doing right now um and uh started watching for a rewind next week uh so yeah it's just my my viewing time is very very limited somebody every show asks about that have you noticed that i think it's four shows in a row somebody's like are you caught up on the orville no i don't know what i'm going to it's on disney plus which is weird yeah yeah, it was big news when they did that, and I'm like, why? For like other countries, it's cool that don't have Hulu, but like here, it's whatever because most people that have Disney Plus have the package thing with Hulu anyway. Yeah, it seems weird. I yeah, guess they're just they're just trying to pack that service out. It's and once again, again, that's a show I like a lot. I've watched the first three episodes. I liked them a lot. I just I'm busy. I have not I've not gotten back to that. And other things keep popping up like. You know, people are going to ask about She-Hulk and stuff. I'm going to try to watch at least the first couple episodes of that when the second episode drops just so that I've sampled it. Uh, but anyway. Robert Wilde, $2 Super Chat. The what Zer- was me? First World Problems. Oh, Cap, your <laughs> life is so difficult. You have to watch TV all the time. Ugh. <laughs> Give it a rest, Cap. <laughs> Stop complaining. Guys, it's not like you have to work in a rock quarry. But then you might get hit by a meteor rock and get superpowers. <laughs> you have oh, to work in a silver mine. Sorry, we haven't <laughs> talked about this at all. I've been I've been uh, listening to Talkville. 
which is a terrible name. Have but, you uh, really? It's a terrible name, and Rosenbaum is so excited about it. And Tom Welling is like, uh, <laughs> Rosenbaum is like, it's like, uh, so, so, so Welling, are you, are you finally excited about the name? Because Welling, uh, it sounds like didn't like it, and he's yeah. like. I mean, I'm not as excited about it as you are. <laughs> Watch that one too. Yeah, that was really funny. Apparently, they they there was like they all of their picks that they wanted to call it were taken, and they ended up like way down the list. And they were afraid to put Smallville in the title because they didn't want to get sued. Yeah, and, and none could... of these things use the actual show in the title. Like, there's a boy that there's a boy meets world one that just started that's called like Pod Meets World infinitely better title than Talkville, by the way. And I uh, like, like, so, you know, all of them have to do that kind of, that kind of name thing. Yeah. Which is weird because I guess it's because it's the actual creators, but I listen to the always sunny podcast now, like all the time. And it's just called the always sunny podcast, but they also create the show. They're not just actors. So I guess that makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, um, it's a haphazard podcast. I, uh, it makes me feel not as bad for being completely unprofessional with what I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's very fun. I, I like it a lot. I'm probably gonna call into that show, uh, because they because they do. I don't know how much yeah, you've yeah. listened to, but they they, uh, they have a up. Oh, are you okay? I'm I'm only two and a half episodes in because I'm just Kurt pops in. I'm just yeah, Kristen Kurt uh, episode four I think um four mm-hmm. five. I uh, I've been listening to it when I'm like doing the dishes and stuff. So um I'm yeah. listening to it in like 10, 15 minute chunks. Uh, but yeah, it's it's fun. Um, I like my uh, uh, Tom Welling after listening to those shows about 19 times more than I did before. Um, I think he is, he should have had a podcast all this time. He's really good at it. Uh, like he, he's, he's a lot of fun to listen to and he's just really positive and he's got the right kind of personality for a show like that. And like Welling is a really good, like radio show host, you know, like he's got a yeah. podcast. He's in, in, but, but he's, he's got like a, um, I don't know. I don't know who I would compare him to, but like Welling just seems like a, a, a real down to earth kind of podcast type, and like I'm really glad that he got him to commit to it. Yeah, yeah. He's he seems like the guy guy like you would just like to hang out with. Like he seems really cool. Rosenbaum seems like uh, he might be fun to listen to, but not to hang out with. Like he would make fun of you all the time, and I'm probably having that too. <laughs> I'm having that too. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I've listened to his other podcast quite a bit too. Yeah, I remember when when they when he had Tom Welling on for the first time on his other podcast a long time ago. I was like, oh wow, they're not, they're like opposites of what I, he's he's kind of like making crass jokes all the time and acting like he, uh, he's like twenty still. <laughs> and Tom Welling seems really cool. This is weird. I gotta tell you, I wasn't going to listen to that show, or I wasn't sure I wanted to because I still feel weird about never finishing uh, Crypto Freaks, and now like you know two of the lead actors are doing a show and I'm like, well, that ship has sailed now. There's no reason to do it. And then I felt, I felt weird about listening to it just because I hate that I never finished that. And then I was too curious and I started listening to it and it, it's really fun. And um, real quickly, you mentioned this. I, 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 to this day, go back and forth on how to handle the Smallville review thing here on the channel. And now that these guys are doing the show, I'm thinking, I'm feeling differently about it. Uh, like, cause in some ways it's like, well, it's been 21 years. It's not relevant anymore. And then it's like, oh yeah, but these guys are doing a show and people are watching the show again for this show. So now mm-hmm. it feels sort of relevant again. Uh, and it's like, well, I don't want to, I wouldn't want to just do what they're doing. Cause people wouldn't like listen to me talk and then, then talk. You wouldn't have time for that. But if I was still doing the pod or the, the commentary thing, you could like watch the show with me and then listen to them talk about it. If I could like keep up with it, like, like as they're putting it out, it would make a lot of sense to do the commentaries again. But the last time I did a poll asking if people would prefer season overviews versus the commentaries, only 12% of people said they wanted the commentaries. Well, if it's commentaries or nothing, I'm sure the, the more people would come around. <laughs> and so that, that puts me very much on the fence again, because I'm thinking if I could find a way to work it in, it would just it would give me incentive to keep up with it regularly. Because if I had to, like, make, you know, watch the show and do a commentary before they get their show up, it might get me to just kind of, you know, bust my butt and make the thing. Uh, mm-hmm. so I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kicking it around again, but like waiting until they catch up to where I am. Cause right now they're, they're on like episode six of season one and I've done commentaries all the way up through almost the end of season three. So I've got a while. And then once yeah, they, yeah. W- once they catch up to me, then I can start my show again. I'm kicking it around. I don't know yet. Interesting. But it would yeah, give me a reason really, to do it. It would give me a better do, reason to do it. 
I do think Tom Welling is too positive, uh, and I really like every time when they do they go to the ranking and like yes. Rosenbaum breaks him down, like shames him into bringing the score down because Tom Welling wants to give everything like a three out of six or no, like a five out of six, and he's like, "What are you talking about? This is." This is the Bug Boy episode. We this is not one of the best episodes. It's really funny. What I love is that Rosenbaum is actually uh, like allowing himself to be critical of that show now, though. Like if he hates oh, an yeah. episode, he'll say he hates it. And I think Tom Welling is a and nothing against Tom Welling. I I don't think Tom Welling is the most critically minded person. Like I think that's part of it with, with him is just like it's that that's not his personality that's not that's not his background that's not where he comes from mm. um but i also think that he has a lot of nostalgia for those early days and oh, i wonder yeah. if he gets a little more critical as it as it nears its end or if he stays that way the entire way through like he could be nostalgic for different nostalgic for different reasons toward the end where like he is more of a he's in more of a leadership role by the end of that he's a producer on that show yeah, I mean, how do you not? It's how how are you not nostalgic for your first acting job way back when you were like twenty, and it's like this big, huge ten years of your life. Like, and they clearly totally, got totally along with nearly everybody. Yeah. Although he mentions in that in like the second episode about that one, or maybe it's later. Uh, I don't know if you got to it yet. He mentions about this one guy who like is like a props guy who he was supposed to punch through this thing, and he's like, I don't think that's gonna break. And he's like, Oh, you don't think it's gonna break? Huh? And then he tried to punch it, and like it didn't break and he hurt his hand and that guy never came back because he got fired. Because... Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, like they'll have some crew people and stuff like that, but like the main cast members that are there most of the time, like clearly they all got along and they're not just making oh, yeah. that up. And, um, I get how the, much like, did it blow your mind for it's pretty warts say... and all. And I, and I, yeah, yeah. Or, or at least as much as you could expect it to be. And I appreciate that about it. I don't think Welling's uh, pulling his punches. I think he's just positive. Like, yeah, yeah. I think he's just excited to be watching a TV show as part of it. You know what I mean? Like, I think he just doesn't spend a lot of time watching stuff. Yeah. How I think it's fun it, for him. How, how much did it blow your mind that Rosenbaum uh, said, like, his biggest crush while he was on the show was Aunt Nell? <laughs> but, I mean, he's talking uh, about the actress, not the character. I haven't gotten to that part yet. He hasn't said oh, that okay. yet. Okay. Uh, AMC Comics, I don't know, Cap, I think there's still a place for your Smallville coverage. I mean, they're talking inside baseball, having been there, which is different from your perspective. Uh, yeah, and that's and, and that's part of why um, I'm thinking that it might be cool if I waited until they caught up with where I was. Because then, like, we're all watching the show for their show, but then I'm doing my, like, um you know, boring prudish analysis thing. And then you can listen to them be, in, be uh, you know, you know, be um, kind of, kind of more fun and laid back about it. All right. Shall we move? Shall we? Well, tell me, I like how Cap and DJ just forgot about Robert Super Chad. Oh, we didn't forget about it. It's right here. I'm about to read it. <laughs> we did get, we did get off on a rabbit trail though. We, we did. Well, and I don't even know why you brought up that podcast. I'm sorry. You were just like, you're just like, uh, oh, by the way, I've been listening to the po this podcast. I'm like, oh, you have? And then I just ran away with this. Sorry about that. Why, why did you bring got, that up? I don't remember what got me on it. Something you said about the Orville. Oh. And then Dis we started talking about Disney Plus. I don't know. Something something got me on it. Um, anyway, Robert Wilde, speaking of Disney Plus, $2. The Zerg twist in Lightyear ruined my day. I thought you were going to say Childhood. <laughs> no. Well, I'm Not sorry it day. ruined your day. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, like I said in my review, there are it's it's not an uninteresting place to go if you did that story without the Zerg part. The problem is that it's Zerg. That's the problem with it. And it wouldn't be a thing you'd want to do until like your second or third movie. You know, like it's still not your, you know, your light year origin movie. Not origin, but. Kind of. Anyway. Uh, Super Billy, $2. Counting the days till they introduce the Sentry. <laughs> uh, that, that's going to be like scraping the bottom of the barrel. You remember when the Sentry was like popular? I still no. don't know one thing about the Sentry. I don't know Jack for anything about this camera right there. When I started collecting current again, and of course I'm I'm totally out of current right now. I'm not I'm not buying anything new right now. But uh back when I started the channel in circa two thousand nine and into two thousand ten, I I, w I started heavily uh getting invested in current back then. And that was right off the heels of 
apparently this like big like century phase for Marvel. And he was popular at the same time as uh, the Green Lantern side of DC was like, you know, second only to Batman in how popular it was. And it was already starting to fall off. So I would see YouTube videos still about Century, but I didn't see much about that in comics. And I never knew anything about that character. Oh, here's this thing that's pop. Oh, I guess it's not that popular anymore. All right, and then I and then I never really looked into it. Well, you see, Black Adam is gonna punch the Sentry in the face. <laughs> Did you see what? Let me see, let me find the quote. We've got another Rock quote. Stop! Stop talking, The Rock. <laughs> Everything you say makes me want to watch this movie less and less. Uh. Dwayne Johnson, Black Adams. So this is from uh, HeroicHollywood.com. I've never heard of this website, but uh, this is a quote, so it must be true. Uh, but, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, nice. Black Adams star Dwayne Johnson is hoping for a DC Marvel crossover movie. Of course. Dwayne Johnson is revealed he's holding out hope for a crossover with Marvel Cinematic Universe at some point in the future. Uh, I am optimistic. Just my nature is optimistic. And, oh, yeah, he, he's a real Tom Welling. <laughs> and especially when it comes to creative, period. Especially when it comes to movies. And especially when it comes to the pantheon of DC superheroes and supervillains. Across the street, we have the pantheon of superheroes and supervillains of Marvel. To me, they can not only exist, but they should, in my mind, cross paths one day. Like, he's not even making sentences all that well in that quote. Well, he's like, is he almost 60? Is he in his they 50s? Can, they can exist. What do you mean? What is he even talking about? Does he mean like they can exist in the same universe? Does he not know that we're in the middle of a multiverse thing right he now? Doesn't watch like, the movies. He doesn't care. He just no, wants to be in them. <laughs> no, he... Cle we, we've been talking about this a lot lately. Nobody is more out of touch than Dwayne Johnson when it comes to superhero <laughs> movies. I, like, not even Michael Keaton is as out of touch as Dwayne Johnson is about superhero movies right now. Yeah, him, like, being like, oh, man. He's 50. Oh. He's 50. Okay, he's 50. Him, like, being, oh, yeah, the Black Adam's not like Superman and Batman. He'll kill people. I'm like, what universe are you in? Are you watching the universe that you're in? And also, duh! Thanks for explaining what a villain is versus a hero. Like, good job. Yeah, and they and thanks for like he thinks he invented the concept of the anti-hero. The way the way he talks about it, it's hilarious. Uh, it's like, says do you that not well? do you not know? Sorry, do you not know the the reputation that DC still has versus Marvel? just because of what happened with BVS and Justice League and all of that. Like, now some of their movies are a little bit more lighthearted, but what, does he think that everything was Shazam? Does he even know who Shazam is? I'm not convinced of this. I'm not convinced that he know, or at least, what Shazam is and how it connects to Black Adam, because apparently they don't have any plans of ever crossing those characters over, and Dwayne Johnson is really happy about that, it sounds like. Yeah, he's like, oh, no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't waste... A, a character with this rich history of Black Adam in a Shazam movie. No, he's got to be his own thing, even though he gets his powers from the exact same. He's like, he is Shazam. He's just dark Shazam. It's like if Ironmonger was in like a Captain America movie or something. <laughs> Cap has died. <laughs> to, paraphrase, to paraphrase Bane, what are you talking about? Like, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't. I never know what he's talking about. He he tried to bring up the whole uh, MCU DC crossover like way back when they did uh, Red Notice because it was like him, uh, Gal Gadot and Ryan Reynolds and like we got to get this thing going. We got to. I'm like, it's not gonna happen, dude. And well, you did, three are not gonna be the ones to make that happen. Valiant movie or was that was that a different thing? I can't remember. Ben Connor Diesel? and I. Oh, that was Diesel. That wasn't him. Yeah. That's right. Well, I can't they be the only can't person that occasionally conflates those things. And and I and or the, those those guys. I bet Vin Diesel knows about more about Marvel, or more, oh, more about course. superhero movies. He's in the MCU, so yeah. He's... Oh well, that's true. But even if he wasn't, I bet he'd be less out of touch. Yeah. No, he, he is Groot. Comics. That's true. I forgot about that. I forgot and, about that. And and Black Adam's gonna punch Groot in the face. He's gonna punch him in the face. 
Yeah. Look, Groot not only can exist, but they could <laughs> even be in a movie together. Why, oh, why gotcha. didn't he say, like... Uh, well, again, he's out of touch. Like, if, if, it's, if it's me... And I mean, like, I know that, you know, I'm having to look into this stuff more than he is, but like, you know, there, there's there's some basic information that I think e even most people are probably familiar with at this point. If I get that question, or, or, or if I'm or if I'm like excited about the, the the possibility of them crossing over and somebody's like, do you think it could ever happen? I would say, well, just look at Sony and MCU. Mm -hmm. like, like, just just look at Sony and Marvel Studios. Like, they, they found a way to compromise. Um, if, like, it's a longer road to getting to, and I think we've talked about this on the show before, to getting to Disney and Warner Brothers uh, working together to make a thing like that happen. But how much money is on the table for both studios? It wouldn't even have to be good. No, you know I mean, mean how, Everyone how, how, goes to that. Look what happened with Spider-Man. Like, yeah. all you had to do was take those three guys, set the precedent of a, 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 a three different continuities in one movie, and everybody sold $1.9 billion. Look what BVS did. And it sucks. <laughs> Some people like that movie. I understand that, but I don't. Like, it still made $850 million and it was one of the most polarizing things in history. Just because those characters had never been on screen together. So you take Batman and Spider-Man and put them in a movie together. Forget the rest of Marvel. Just say those two characters. What kind of money does it make? Even if it's just two Mr. Potato Heads wearing a Batman costume and a Spider-Man costume, everybody goes. But you know who won't be in that crossover? Black Adam. Black Adam! <laughs> Who the heck's going to put Black Adam in the first DC Marvel crossover? Yeah, and certainly not his dog. <laughs> Do you know about that? No, is he have a dog in that movie? No, no, it's better than that. So I forgot. I know he plays the dog. In, I forgot uh... to talk about this. Uh, in, you know, and I don't know how I forgot about this, but uh, when Austin and I reviewed Super Pets, and yes, we somehow got a two-hour podcast out of Super Pets, uh, the last half hour... We didn't really talk about that. We talked about, uh, like, kids' movies at large. But we, we did two hours on that movie. We forgot to talk about the after credit scene. Because they, they used that DJ as a commercial for Black Adam. <laughs> Not kidding. Black Adam shows up with his dog. He's Black Adam's got a dog. And he's like crypto, but he's, but he's like a black dog. He's like a Black Adam dog. And in that scene, I... Uh, Dwayne Johnson voices all three characters. Oh my gosh. That happened. That's horrible. <laughs> it's really bad. What is happening? That's really bad. Zaslov needs to step in and take he care does of He does because he's about quality. He's about quality and not quantity. And that, that means uh, roles too. I mean, he's got three roles now. Can we make that a t shirt? With Zaslov equals quality? Zaslov's about quality. I don't know Zaslov's if, too real. I don't know if we're allowed to make fun of real people with our t-shirts. That's maybe, true. Maybe we won't do that. Anyway, uh, what else? Yeah. Oh, once again, in case you you came in late, if you, if you just arrived, or uh, or you've forgotten about this, uh, there's still time because we're still broadcasting to uh, buy a T-shirt. They're on sale. It's fourteen dollars. You can uh, click on the link in the description, and you can't watch a Geek Solution video without wearing a Geek Solution T-shirt. And if you buy one this evening, uh, and you're the first person who maybe somebody's already done it, but if you're the first person to buy one, I will give you a free request that will go on the queue, and uh, in three to four months, you will have a review for me on whatever it is that you want me to review. Anyway, uh, do we have more Super Chats? <laughs> yes, we do. But we have a chat, a regular chat, for Adam March says, if The Rock comes in and ruins the Lyle Lyle Crocodile movie, we must riot. Uh, yeah, would, would it be really funny if, like, all of the, uh, the commercials and trailers that we're already getting for that movie and then it just is unceremoniously shelved? Oh man! Hey, um, I I don't I don't usually like to do this, but uh, let me think. Am I gonna do this? Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Okay, uh, DJ, I need you to give me like sixty seconds. I gotta run off and grab something. Do you want me to time you or? <laughs> uh, no. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to be like sixty seconds. I'm gonna okay. grab something to show you guys. I'll be right oh, back. Cool. Uh, would you just like chat with the viewers for a minute? Sure. Maybe they'll throw you, you a question. I'll be right back. Throw me back. a bone, guys. Uh, you know what? It'll be a little bit longer than 60 seconds. Give me like 120 seconds, okay? I'll be right back. 
Okay, guys, don't don't time him. He's running upstairs to get us a special treat. I'm excited. My interest is peaked. I don't know what he's talking about. Is he talking about like an unboxing or did he buy like more Batman merch? Probably. Who knows? We'll see in a second. 60 seconds, 120 seconds, I guess. But thank you guys for all the good super chats. We've still got one, two, three, four, five, six from Super Billy and Philip Kelton. So we will get to those in a minute. But yeah, what's going on? No, Mutali, I have not seen Sandman yet. Have you? Is it great? I've heard good things. I've heard it's not quite as good as the book, but how could it be? But I've heard uh, I've heard it's pretty good. So I do want to check that out. I just finished Miss Marvel last night or you know, Tuesday, I think. So uh, I need a new show. I'm gonna try to get my watch to watch my watch. I'm gonna try to get my wife to watch Sandman with me. DJ, will you start a mutiny and throw over Cap, Daniel Davis? <laughs> no, no, that that would not work at all because then all of the subscribers would be mad at me. Nobody would join that mutiny. I've got my own channel. I'll talk about things over there. I'm not gonna steal this one, nor could I. Robert Wilde, how much do you really hate Captain Logan? Got any dirt on him? Um, well. I, I'm st he's still my my boss, so I won't I I'll wait till the day that I quit that I reveal all the dirt that I have on him. <laughs> AMC Comics, yes, DJ, bring by the darned timer from the early GNN days and time him. You're you're one of the few people that wants that to come back. <laughs> he's a timer fan. He's a fan back in the timer days. Yeah, some some people really like this. So, there are a few people that still wish our videos were really short. Yeah, yeah. But can't stand those people. That's not I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, just I mean kidding. I see the appeal of both. Like some people like to sit down and watch a 10-minute uh, YouTube video, and some people want YouTube to be more podcasty, and some people like a mix a mix of both. So of course we've gone to the total podcast place now, and everything we do is live streaming. Uh, but it was fun doing those kinds of videos. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've just always been a podcast guy, even since the very beginning. And now my dreams have come true. You're, you're even in them. Full on podcast guy. I guess yep. this is kind of a podcast. He wanted from the beginning the channel to be called Waste Your Time Volution, <laughs> which we should also put on a, a t shirt, by the way. Uh, okay, so DJ, I want to show you guys something. Uh, yesterday, I got package in the mail. Ooh. Yeah, I was speculating while you were gone. Is this like another unboxing? Is this another like Batman 89 merch situation? No, no, it's not. Uh, this is a thing far fewer people will care about. And oh, it's a big troll move. So I opened a box yesterday, and it was from my dear friend, Austin the Day Ghost. Oh, of course. The king troll himself. Uh, so back when the Clifford movie came out, I opened up a box, and it had... Did, did, I, did I tell you about this? I don't know if I ever showed this on camera. It you had did, a yeah, big stuff. stuffed Clifford dog in it. We did that right before or right after we did the blind commentary on that movie. I can't remember. Well, I opened a box today from Austin, or yesterday from Austin, and I went, what is going to be in this box? And in this box is was the Clifford Collection. Uh, hey, I have that exact book. Do you really? Yeah, I, I just, oh my gosh, I just read that to my son tonight before I put him to sleep, that one of those stories in there. The original six stories, and uh, I say this was a troll move, uh, I really appreciate it, because this is great for my kids, of course, and uh, they'll, they'll appreciate both of these things, uh, <laughs> but the other one, can you guess? Can you guess what the other one is? Is it the TV show on DVD? Lyle Lyle Crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> is that, that's a new, that's an updated version, that's a... Is that like five stories? This is the storybook treasury. Okay. Uh, 50th anniversary. So I don't know what all is in this because I've never really read these past the first one when I was a little kid. And uh, Austin sent me this specifically because he wanted me to make sure that I did my homework for when we have to do the Lao Lao Crocodile uh, blind commentary when it comes to digital streaming. That is amazing. This is the only Lyle book I have within reach. This is lovable Lyle. I think this is the second one, maybe? Okay, but it's uh, nuts that you had one within reach. I mean, I know you have children, but... Yeah, so I just read the third book in that Clifford six-book collection, which is Clifford Gets a Job, uh, which he goes to a circus, 
And the second one is called Clifford Goes to the Circus. So the the, the author really likes circuses because he gets two in real early in the series. <laughs> uh, Austin is watching right now. Uh, hi, buddy. Th thanks so much for this package, by the way. He says it works both ways because it's funny for Cap, but it goes well for his kids. Yeah, I mean, that was really neat, neat of you. And I, I knew he must have done that on purpose. And then he says when the Babar movie comes, he'll get that. Dude, Babar is crazy. Babar is, is like, you know what Babar is? Yeah. I mean, I never read it's it, like, but, like, I know what it looks like. They're Did like it have a cartoon more. show? Uh, it has a movie that is on uh, Disney Plus, or, no, it's on Amazon that I started watching with my son, and it starts with, like, his mother getting shot uh, by a hunter. I'm like, oh! And it's, like, not even, like, it's, like, real somber and depressing. I'm like, oh, let's let's change this. Let's watch something else. But Babar's, like, much, eh, not much later, but it's it's a lot more reading than than these kind of books. Like, it's it's longer books, and they're originally in French, and they're translated, like, the author is oh, French. Oh, I didn't but... know them. Interesting. It's about an elephant who's a king. He's, he's pretty cool. He wears a green suit. But yeah, the Babar movie. And then we'll have the trilogy. And we can have the the Avengers with Paddington, Lyle, Clifford, and Babar. Before I showed that, Senior Sticks wrote, Dago sent Cap a Jared Leto gift. <laughs> it was oh. not a Jared Leto gift. Uh, it Good. was not like Dead Rats or anything. like. I don't think. I don't think there's any Dead Rats in those books. They looked brand new, so they look all right. That's good. That's good. But you still have some pages to flip through, so you never know. That's true. Okay, we are 15 minutes before two hours. I don't know where all that time went. Uh, I've wasted it. So, uh, Austin, <laughs> Austin, DJ, uh, how many Super Chats do we have left, sir? We have about six or seven. Oh, uh, that's not the worst. Let's try to get through them. All right. Philip Kelton. Yes. 20, Mex 20 Mexican pesos. Okay. I just arrived. What is the summary? <laughs> well, we can't be giving people summaries. Well, at the beginning, uh, we talked about uh, the 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 Marvel slate with five and six because they got all ahead of themselves, and then we tried to guess at uh, superheroes that would probably be in the new Avengers movies, and then people left super chats about that and the Orville, and then mm -hmm. we and, and then we got off and I uh, trying to once again get me to post old footage of Eric, which I'm not promising I'll do, and on Patreon. And then uh, we went off on a tangent about the new Smallville podcast, and I suggested that I might finally finish my commentaries because Welling and Rosenbaum are talking about that show now week to week. And then we spent about five minutes trying to remember where in the world we even got off on that. And then I left for a couple minutes and then I talked about a package I opened. You were probably here for this, but yeah, this yeah, is the yeah. summary all the way up to now. Uh, we, I got Clifford and I got Lyle Lyle Crocodile for research purposes. And uh, now the rest of the show. Are we caught up? Are we all caught up now? We're all good. Thanks okay. for that. Wonderful. You're, you're like the thing in the Fantastic Four Rise of Silver Surfer. I, I do feel like, wait, is he the exposition head in that? Yeah, you don't remember that scene where he's Not like, right he, off. he just like, it's like he's, roll, they're all in the snow and it's like at the end and he's like, so we're this, 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 this. And he's like, is that about sums it up? And they're like, yep. And it's like, I remember that. That was stupid. <laughs> he plays out the whole, he catches you up on everything in case you couldn't follow this insanely simple plot. Yeah. Of this movie. Yeah. It somehow felt as simple as the first movie <laughs> where they got their powers and then they had powers. Yeah. I actually, I, I, I would watch Fantastic Four one. A million times before I watch the second one. I can't stand the second one. It's See, terrible. I don't want to agree with you. <laughs> but the relationship stuff is somehow way worse in that second movie. Oh, it's so hard to watch. And I hate military in the jungle with like a burning passion. And there's so much of that in that. It's probably the sole reason I'm not a Predator fan. <laughs> you are now. Well, I really like that new movie. And people are like, oh, Cap, you're crazy. Like, you, you you enjoyed that better than the... I didn't say it was a better movie. I said I liked it more. We weren't in the jungle. Yeah, that's why I haven't watched... It's not the only reason. Predator, yeah. Yeah, because I, I don't care about military stuff. Like, that's why I don't like aliens. Because it's like, oh, it's like the cool alien stuff, but then I have to watch these stupid macho guys running around. Yeah, shooting guns. I don't care about that. Yeah, boring. <laughs> Sorry, aliens fans. Sorry, Predator fans. <laughs> All right, Super Billy, two dollars. Defenders equals reset of just full. Okay, sorry. Defenders equals reset or just fold them into Avengers. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I, I saw some comments earlier and forgot to weigh in on that. Uh, the idea of 
bringing back defenders as a team. Um, unless we people have heard something I haven't, DJ, and and it's it, and that's confirmed somehow. I don't think you'll ever see that. I don't think there will be a defenders team again. Uh, because, like, that was already a thing that they just took a name that belonged to something else and gave it to street-level heroes with Netflix. Oh, yeah. That series did not do well, but most people didn't really care for it. We don't know how many of those characters, if any, beyond Daredevil will ever come back, and uh, I don't know why they would want to remind everybody of that big failure period they had on Netflix. Uh, so I think you'll see... What do you think, DJ? If we did a street-level team, I think we'd call it probably Dark Avengers or something like that. Like, it, it would be another Avengers team, I think. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with calling a, sh a, a series something that it, it never has to be used in the show. Like, you can call it Marvel Knights, but they don't actually have to go by that. That's a good point. Sure. Um, yeah, because like we're, all, we're always so awkward about, like, fitting in the names of people into their like there's a one at the end of miss marvel too where they have to give her that name really but, uh... <laughs> at but, some but... point at what point are because i mean it's been going on for this long now maybe it will never change i mean 14 years of mcu history several decades now of you know at least at least two of two and a half of like ongoing superhero movies several decades of we sometimes make superhero movies and going Back to the 90s, at least, this has been a trope. And it's gotten worse as it's gotten along, not gone along, not better. And everybody makes fun of it. And I don't know very many people that ever find it clever when you have somebody that goes, oh, we're, we're like uh, some side of Suicide Squad. Like, everybody hates that. Or, or, or like, oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Like, everyone hates that. Stop doing yeah, it. Yeah, why is that the one thing that's too unbelievable? It, the MCU, the most, like, it's not It's not like it's grounded. And, like, why can't they just come up with their own name? Oh, this is what I want to be called. Yeah. A, why does the there name? have to be some sort of a... And whenever I say clever, I mean in air quotes, because it's not. Like, why do we have to have a clever origin for it? Why does it have to... Why... Okay, th th this is the analogy I'm going to use, or the, com or the comparison. You know what it is? Every single time we do this, it's that scene from Mrs. Doubtfire. You remember Mrs. Doubtfire, where Robin Williams is uh, is is sitting in the chair and uh, he is he is pretending he he's come up with a voice and he's on the phone and he's and he's like it, and and he's doing that he's doing that like like fake Irish voice and then he's like oh crap she needs a name and he looks around and he sees a he sees a newspaper and it's like um. And it's like, uh, the police doubt fire. And he's like, aha! And he calls himself Mrs. Doubtfire. It's that every time with yeah. the superhero thing. In fact, usually it's not even that clever. All the way back to the first two. And I understand it there because they were trying to be grounded with Iron Man and Hulk. But in Iron Man, the reporters name him. And then in, in Hulk, That's fine. A, school, a school reporter names him. And he's like, big, big, some kind of Hulk. I'm like, what? That's the word you went with? But, um. All right. But yeah, I mean, I don't know why people can't just name themselves. Have we, have anyone else, has anyone just like, I guess Captain America was just like the name that, but that was kind of like the marketing spin that they That's a marketing thing, but that actually is a cool way to get to that name. Like that one's yeah. fine. Yeah. Has anyone else just decided, <clears throat> hey, this is what I want to be called? Not even Spider-Man. Like Spider-Man was named, I think, by like reporters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you think Spider-Man, of all people, could just be Spider-Man? Did, th did that happen? I mean, he was already called Spider-Man by the time we met him in Civil War. Yeah, but I don't know if that was, like, the newspapers when he was, like, swinging around in his suit or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, and, I, I mean, mean I'm not saying that nobody ever has an origin for their name. Like, classically, Lois Lane names Superman. Like, that's fine. I could see that character, especially in the early days, going around in his suit, not wanting to do press and stuff, not even thinking he has to have a name. Like, why would he need a name? Uh, like, that that's okay, but some of them would come up with their own names. I thought Miss Marvel, of all people, would have come up with her own name. Yeah, real early. Where it's like... She is hero worshiping Captain Marvel. She's just gonna rip off that name, but not say Captain. Uh, what? What? I, I don't know. 
Miss Marvel. Like, but you don't even need a moment for it. You don't even need a bit where she comes up with her name. But she Somebody did. just goes, what are you? It, but it should just be like, uh, yeah. who are you? I'm Miss Marvel. There you go. Whatever happened to I'm Batman? What happened to it? Right? Yeah, Batman no. 89. He's been doing his thing for a year. He's an urban legend. Nobody even knows if he's actually real. It's like, ah, some kind of giant bat, some kind of creature kind of looks like a bat. And then he's, 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 on a, he's on a roof. And then he's got of the course. guy by the lapel. Of course. He's got the guy by, by a lapel. And he's like, I want you to Hi, tell all your I'm friends Batman. about me. I'm Batman. You didn't need him to... You need a moment where it's like, okay, he's fine. By the end of the movie, he's finally... That's... I think one of the reasons I love 89 so much, even though there's a lot of nonsensical stuff in that movie and there's a lot of things with it that's not really what I want from Batman, is that he's the character from the from the first frame. He doesn't have to grow into Batman. It's like it's early in his career, but you get to just live with Batman. Like what happened to that? I don't know. Batman. That's Batman's thing. We can't take Batman's thing. Everybody else has to come up with it or have someone else come up with it for them because they it's can't not be Batman's thing. Creative. It should be at least half of people's thing. <laughs> uh, Hot Soup, he did name himself. He was the human spider. That one's okay. That one's okay, because then at least later he's just Spider-Man, right? Like, Well, but but I don't like that that guy in an underground thing came up with the name. Oh, that's and then, true. Because he was like, the amazing how... Spider-Man. And also, the name he... It's also, uh, like, we're, on, we're off on a tangent now. It's also <laughs> generic and uh, arbitrary, right? To be like, somehow the name Spider-Man is less generic in that context than the human spider. Like, yeah, it, it probably sold comics better, but part of that's because of, like, just the stories were good and, like, what the costume looked like and all of that, right? Like, Yeah, that's just, like, a thing where we've heard Spider-Man ever since we were born, like, a million times, so it sounds better on our head than the human yeah, spider. Yeah, I would argue that in a... No, this one is also not the best, right? Because in... Yeah. In the context of a wrestling arena, the human spider sounds more like a wrestling name than the amazing Spider-Man. That sounds like a superhero. And he's like, that sucks. I'm like, why does that suck? <laughs> You're standing in a, in a ring for hours on end with a guy named Bonesaw. Bonesaw. Anyway, we have to move on. All right. Uh, Philip Kelton, 50 Mexican pesos. And okay. scene. <laughs> He says, okay, I go away for a minute, and now you have, you are ready to re-embracing the corporate overlords for other 20 years? What the heck happened? <laughs> oh, that's not true. I'm just saying that it was more fun to talk about than I expected it to be. Yeah. We're not going to love everything. But, I, can, uh, I, can have, uh, I can have nuanced feelings about no. things. And and and, I, and also, I think I'm allowed to feel day to day differently about this. You know, yeah. I think I could wake up tomorrow and be like, "Yeah, I'm 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 pretty sick of Marvel," and then right now be like, "I'm just in the mood for that." I don't know because some of it isn't just well, it's so oversaturated and I'm sick of it. Sometimes it is just something of a mood thing. Like it's so in my face all the time. It's hard to get as in the mood for it as I once was. And as we keep talking Absolutely. about, it's not as special as it used to be. But. When I'm when I'm looking at that list of all of the things that are coming out, um, a lot of them I'm not immediately excited about. But I also am kind of happy with the potential for variety in some of it. There is, of course, the big question of, and I meant to mention this earlier, how many of those heroes are going to be are going to reach anything like the popularity of what we now think of as the legacy MCU heroes? How are we this far along? They're legacy heroes now, and when we get to that movie. Um, are people going because it's just what you do now? Or are they going because those characters, uh, like any of them, they're really excited about and love now and their kids are wearing t-shirts of? Like, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's a question. Uh, Adam Arch says, I bet Bonesaw named himself. Oh, uh, he definitely did. No, actually, I want to see that scene. <laughs> where Bruce Campbell's like, nah, that sucks. You, you, he's, he is... The gratuitous bone saw. Uh, I, I want that on a comic cover, where the, where the, the the word for whatever it is is gratuitous. The gratuitous Groot. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like gratuitous bone saw. Speaking of gratuitous, isn't there like a baby Groot show right now? Yeah. 
or something? Yeah, I, I forgot that, that was happening. Uh, it looked terrible. That should have been called the gratuitous Groot. It, it does seem gratuitous. Perfect. That is true. No, I love that because it's like he's so cute. He's got to be everywhere. Like Baby Yoda, also gratuitous. And his name is like, his name also starts with G, right? It's Guru, Guru or something. See, now I don't even want to tell you. <laughs> uh, it's See, and now that you said that, actually, my, my, my brain is fried and I'm forgetting. But it's uh, Grogu. 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 The gratuitous I, Grogu. That's pretty that good, is. too. Yeah, yeah. The gratuitous Groot and Grogu. That's the show that should be. Disney okay. Plus next year. Super Billy, $5. Can we finish these Super Chats? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Recast Richard Madden as Hyperion in Eternals 2. He's an Eternal from another universe. Too bad there won't be an Eternals 2. Zao deserves another go. Yeah, I didn't really need a sequel to that, personally, because I think it, it stands alone just fine. Um, I'm in a little bit of a different place than DJ with this a little bit, where, like, uh, I know that DJ was kind of... You know, we get to the end of that movie, and they are doing some sort of setup y things for other things, um, and because it's a standalone piece, DJ was kind of irked by that. What... I want is is actually just take the characters that were most interesting in that and file them out and let them be in some other things. Like, I really don't need another whole Eternals movie, but you had a lot of characters in that, and everybody's got potential for um, interesting character interactions in other things, and you do have a whole sprawling universe. You could put them in different places. So, like, um, I know that, like, like, I get where DJ's coming from with continuity, and I'm with you on that, but at the same time, I think that, that there's interesting possible mashups with some of those characters and other in other things so that's what i would do with it like i just move them around yeah totally or do you need a sequel to that no i don't i don't really want a sequel to that um i uh yeah because it because it got into stuff that i i like the story that they told and i don't really want to go off on like a space quest thing but i'm not a space guy I like I, the more of the... I am a space guy. Like the history of Earth um, le- myth and legends that they were starting was much more interesting to me. Well, what I liked about that movie is that it starts from a cosmic place, but it was much more of a fantasy film. Hmm. Or it felt like a fantasy film, even though a lot of it is kind of, you know, pseudoscience-based. Like, uh, and, and it felt more like the kind of fantasy that uh yeah i mean i guess it's science fantasy right like and, and thor has elements of that but they embraced it a lot more than thor did so in certain ways it was a lot more of what i wanted from a thor movie if that makes any sense at all yeah which is fascinating because the because it mostly takes place on earth and that was what we always complained about with the thor movies but they still at least were with like god characters the whole time instead of like running around with professor old fart and his little <laughs> well it helped that it was kick. allowed to be as stylized as it was like we're looking yeah. at earth from another lens so it doesn't oh, feel absolutely. like you're just on earth yeah but you are I, you're I right never, i never thought i would see like the gardens of babylon in an mcu movie like that was so cool yeah well and there's just so much like lush scenery and stuff like the way that movie shot mm-hmm. it's pretty it's pretty if you hated that movie give it give it another shot you might appreciate it more in a second viewing. Or you might not. Yeah. Or watch it in, like, three viewings, because that probably should have been a miniseries. That's yeah. one that should have been a miniseries. It's three hours long. It could have maybe even been a little bit longer to flesh out certain characters if only it was allowed to be a miniseries. Uh, they're backwards on some of this stuff, man. They'll take an hour and a half concept, and they'll make it five hours. And then they'll take a five-hour concept, and they'll make it two hours. Stop it. All right, another one from Super Billy. I have two dollars no on anything. About Eternal. Oh, well, he says, uh, "What new A equals Sam, comma Peter, comma Monica, comma Thor, Stephen, and Shuri." Okay, so I'm I'm assuming he means new I'm Avengers. I'm really bad at word puzzles. <laughs> like I said, I'm assuming he means new Avengers, and he's give, he's giving his five. Okay, like, okay. So he says Sam, Peter, Monica. Thor, Steven, and Shuri. So that's Falcon okay. Cap, Spider Man. Yeah. I don't think Spider Man will be an Avenger. I Stephen really Strange, don't. Black Panther, Shuri. Who's Monica again? Is that the one from Monica Rambo? One of the Marvels, yeah. yeah but yeah. but it's hard to say which of those if they only pick one, and in that it wouldn't be all three to some capacity. Uh, so yeah, yeah. But I, if you're going I on just popularity, Monica, I'd say Rambo because. 
Uh, Miss Marvel, that show apparently didn't do the best, and people are real shaky on, you know, Captain Marvel just as a movie and as a character. So, yeah. yeah I Which is see why that movie. has to be a team movie. I could see Captain Marvel being up in co- cosmic space land doing her things and Miss Marvel on the streets doing her things and then Rambo just being on the Avengers team. Super Billy puts in... But what I'd much rather see is Monica Rambo just punches out Carol Danvers, steals her costume, and then is Captain Marvel for the rest of the time. I, I would I would much prefer that. But then Black Adam comes in and punches Rambo in the face. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson... Here is somebody talk about this, and the only word he hears is Rambo. <laughs> and then he does a tweet where he's like, I didn't know Marvel was doing Rambo now. I gotta punch him in the face, too. And then... Why is Rambo a woman? Why does she have superpowers? Anyway. Why does she have purple eyes? Super Billy. Those horrible purple eyes! <laughs> what is wrong with us tonight? We cannot stay on track. <laughs> Super Billy has another two dollar like second part of that one. This is what's says, gonna be like if we're doing this twice a week. Okay, guys, it, like it's go, it's gonna get loopy. Sorry, sorry. Good, good. Yeah, the second part of it is yes. Shang, Jennifer, Mark, Yelena, and Matt and Howard. Okay, if you do this first name thing, it's gonna really throw me off because I'm not keeping up with some of this stuff all that hard. Uh, so, what was the first thing he said? Shang is Shang Chi. Oh, okay, Gen- okay. Jennifer is Jennifer. Walters. I know who that is. Okay, all right. Mark with the C is that is Mark Spector. That's okay. Moon Knight. Moon Knight, and yeah. then Yelena we know, and then Matt and Howard. Uh, who's is Howard? That... The Duck? Yeah, Daredevil and Howard the Duck. I don't know. I mean, I'd watch that show. <laughs> Daredevil and Howard the Duck. Murdoch and Howard. Murdoch and Duck. <laughs> Attorneys at law. It's right there. They they have a they have a whole they they do a they do a pilot where uh, Matt and Foggy have a huge falling out you know like they do in every single run of Modern Daredevil and then Foggy Nelson uh, leaves because he's mad at uh, Matt for like keeping secrets or for uh, you know hurt, like like getting himself hurt all the time as Daredevil and then he's got to find a, a a new partner and he ends up with Howard the Duck and he changes the the marquee to say uh, Murdoch and Duck. Fucking duck. That yeah. sounds that sounds awesome. Like I, Murdoch. I would, Murdoch. Yeah, I would love that. I would watch the crap out of that show. Except the CGI would be dreadful, but I would still watch it. I don't care. I don't need a. I don't need a digital duck to look real. It's just, I mean, just whatever. Just make it look like Howard the Duck. Big bad Harv ninety five. Ah, uh, that's four ninety nine. Yeah. What should DC do with the next iteration of Superman? WB doesn't seem to have an idea, and I'm tired of seeing them fumble with one of the best heroes. Yeah. It's hard to say. Uh, It's hard not to just go with generalities. Uh, I've kind of answered this before, probably, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to make this brief. But the first thing you do is, obviously, you try to keep Superman with his more traditional ideals, but you can update it in that the world around him can be more cynical and dark if you want to. That's fine. I would take a lot of my cues from the Superman and Lois show, at least the way that is conceptualized and set up and the way that character's attitude is. Uh, That guy is Superman, full stop. Do it like that, and you're good. Uh, It doesn't have to be that actor. Just do it like that, Uh, as far as, like, the way he sees the world and how he, he operates. And then after that, go to comic book stuff, and don't do anything you've ever done in the movies before, at least for your first movie. Um, don't do Lex. Don't do Zod. Don't do Zod ever, just because we've had enough of that. Uh, st- I, like, I think it's probably time to go back to the 90s again in that we don't need... As much as I love Kryptonian lore a lot, if you're not going to... Because you know what I want. I just want a straight-up Krypton movie. Uh, I want what that TV show should have been. Because it sucks that didn't work out. But I just want a Jarell movie. Like, that that's the part of Superman that I'm most interested in is just the, you know, background and, and, and uh, Krypton and Jarell and all that. That'd be great. But but don't do that. Because uh, we've done a ton of that. Um, you can maybe have, like, connections to it if you do Brainiac. Because Brainiac's one of the big things we still have somehow never done before. It's, like, sinister. It's very strange that, it, like, it's not been on screen yet. So, um, except at least we haven't had a bunch of allusions to it. 
There's been some almost Brainiac, but like, we, you know, we, we haven't had all these references where it's, you know, an after credits where somebody opens a briefcase and it says Brainiac on it. Like, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, but anyway, like, don't do so much Krypton stuff. Maybe go back to the 90s where we really do have Superman as kind of the last son of Krypton, at least for a while. Uh, maybe eventually get a Supergirl. Um, probably start with Brainiac just because it's really strange that we haven't done that yet. And then you have, like, a, and that might be a cool way to either introduce Superman or do a kind of a, here's an idea. Do, like, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like, a parallel story to the Batman where you do, um, as pure of a kind of modern Superman thing as we did with the Batman for Batman, and uh, maybe it doesn't have to be three hours. I guess it just depends on what you're making. But um, do a do an early Superman story where it's not an origin thing. We've had him for a year, and people are like not totally sure they can trust him, but a lot of people like him because uh, and look up to him because you know he's positive and he's he's altruistic and he's a thing that people didn't think could exist. And then you do just a big alien invasion story with Brainiac. Uh, that's probably where I'd start. And I don't know beyond that what the story's about, because you don't want it to be nothing but, you know, punching Brainiac, but, like, you know, do a Bottle City story. We had, like, it's obvious, but we haven't done it in live action. And that's, you know, start with the basics. That's what I would do. I would just have Black Adam come in and punch Superman in the face. <laughs> There's your movie. That'll sell tickets. Last Super Chat of the night. Philip that Cotton. is quality. <laughs> that's a quality idea right there. That's about as good quality as any movie Dwayne Johnson's ever been in. I think so. You know what? Scrap everything I just said. <laughs> in fact, don't, you know what? Don't even have Superman in it. You know? No. It's, it's just, just it's just Black Adam talking about how he punched Superman in the face. Right. That sounds like Philip, a good idea. Kelton, 50 Mexican pesos. Last Super Chat of the night. Cap, the next time you're going to watch a Marvel movie, watch Terminator 2 a few hours before you go watch the Marvel movie. Okay. Why? Like, I don't know if he means watch it instead. Will I like or... it more because I saw Terminator 2? Or, like, I mean, Terminator 2 is a wonderful film. But why? You don't is this a reference really to something movie. we said earlier? Sorry, what? I have no idea. I okay. don't know what he means. You don't um, want to watch a really, really good movie that you love right before you go see, like, a movie that you're not sure about. Yeah. Because you definitely won't. No, that'll like make it, it worse. I mean, I'll consider your advice in that I'll spend time trying to understand it. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't right off understand that. Uh, <laughs> March, so... Black Adam versus Superman: Dawn of More Black Adam. It's just going to be called Black Adam Presents the DC Universe. That's Zaslav's plan. Quality. Offense taken, DJ. Fast and Furious Six is a mastery of filmmaking, says Dag and Spear. I'm sorry, I haven't watched any of the fan. That, that's the same thing as like the the military like macho men thing. I don't care about cars at all. I can't watch a movie about cars. So I we're announcing it now: Fast and Furious Mania. <laughs> me and DJ right here every other Tuesday just night, sleeping. starting next week. It'd just be two hours of me sleeping every week because you could use I it. I cannot though. stay awake. You could use the rest. car during a car crash. I think oh, you gosh. should sign up for this project because I think you could use the sleep. I definitely could. I definitely could. This this week has been insane. We have been trying to move and trying to work from home. Oh my and also, we have two birthdays that we're doing this weekend because both my kids are August and they're Saturday and Sunday is both of their birthdays. So Good my wife's Lord, parents are man. coming. I'm sorry. Town. We will wrap things up so you can go to bed. <laughs> Just go put in a Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah, it'll put me right to sleep. Watch Terminator oh. 2 first, though. Yeah, of course. Uh, Philip Kelton, last one, uh, Mexican, 20 Mexican pesos. How yeah. long till Superman and bats are in the public domain? Oh, you'd have to look it up. I can't remember. Um, I think there's like a loophole thing where Superman Seven was supposed to be, but then, uh, DC was able to keep a stranglehold on it. So that wouldn't happen. Maybe I can't remember. I, I, I would honestly have to look into this. People ask me about the public domain thing a lot, uh, because some of these characters are getting so old. It's like, well, like, it seems like legally, you know people should have access to them now, at least to be able to take the uh, the initial concepts and do something with them. But, uh, yeah, we've done a lot of, of discussions about public domain. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the actual year count is. Daniel Davis says, DJ and Cap, do a commentary on the Pixar Cars movies. We have actually talked about doing the first one a lot, actually, because we, we both really liked that. that movie. 
Well, we were doing uh, those kind of random commentaries under, like, various show headings. Yeah. And now that I'm set up for commentaries again, um, maybe starting some sometime soon. I mean, starting next month, I can finally start doing commentaries again. I, I was having some technical issues, and... Uh, I'm glad it worked out the way it did because this month was request month and I wasn't doing commentaries and I had about a two week stretch where there was no way I could have done one. And yeah. Now I'm back and able to do that. But yeah, maybe eventually we'll finally do that. Oh yeah, anytime you want to do it. Cars is one of my favorite Pixar movies. I'll do that. Mine too. Time. And we should do that because we are rare birds. Well, yeah. People in that opinion, talking about people are wrong. The movies lovely. They, they honestly are kind of wrong. <laughs> it's a great movie. The the other two are whatever but yeah yeah uh, i'm not going to defend those but i the first one's wonderful we'll, uh, do, more... media. we'll do planes <laughs> oh gosh no i mean hey i can't speak to it i've never seen it but i'm assuming it's and, just a and we'll do it's it's direct to video sequel uh what was that called planes was it fire and rescue fire and rescue how do you remember that i, I was sitting here like something something fire truck i could <laughs> oh hey real quick before we end the show can you indulge me on something Sure, we got one one quick one real quick that just popped in. Okay, I want to I want to play you guys a song. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping first? that it doesn't get me to copyright flag. It probably will, but I'm gonna play you guys a song. Uh, yes, go ahead. Phil Kelton says it will give a better idea of how low the quality movies are today, and with any luck, keep you from being part of this sinking ship Hollywood is. <laughs> okay, oh, he's so just yeah, trying he, to get me to stay away from the. Well, I understand why you feel that way. But I, I don't think that would happen. Like, I would watch Terminator 2 and be like, you know what, this is so good, I'm not going to try another movie from the... Like, more... It would, it would just make me disappointed with the movie that I watched. You know? Yeah. That's, that's what would happen. Hey, yeah, uh, I don't agree with this premise that there's no good movies coming out at all today. I, I don't either. Um, but I, I do agree that it's sometimes slim pickings and that the overall machine is not what it should be. Uh, DJ, did you grow up with Sesame Street... Um, I did not. I grew up with, yes, but it was 90s Sesame Street, like Elmo's World era. Oh, that's unfortunate. I didn't grow up with classics. Cause I was okay. A 90s kid. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to play you uh, a song. We didn't have HBO Max where I could go back and watch that's everything. That's true. I'm going to play you a song. So I, uh, let me set this up real quick. The, a couple weeks ago, um, Jason was playing old episodes of Sesame Street for my twin girls. Uh, they're one. They just turned one uh, recently, a little while ago, um, and a couple months ago. And uh, we heard this song, and it sounded like it was singing about Iron Man. And it took us a couple minutes to figure out what they were actually saying. We just said it was like, did you do the Iron Man? And we're like, why is there a song in Sesame Street about Iron Man? Uh, so I'm going to play you the song without showing you the video because we weren't looking at the video when this when this happened and just let you hear what this sounds like because uh, it's not about Iron Man. Here it is. Can you hear I'm just going to listen. I'm just listening, yes. It's a song about the fireman. Weird. I've never yeah. heard of him just referred to as one. Yeah, he's <laughs> the fireman. Yeah. So what was weird about this song was just how mellow it is, considering the subject matter. Yeah. You know, it's when like, who's going luck. down the street? There's like a raging inferno. Like, the fireman. You know, it's just like this mellow 70s, like Jim Croce kind of music. And it's like, the fireman. It's like, boom. <laughs> anyway, thanks for indulging me on that. I think it's hilarious. The fireman. It's going to be stuck in my head all day. It's been stuck in my head for two weeks. I keep playing it. <laughs> I'll just well, randomly turn it on. The kids love it. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed another frantic episode of The Captain Logan Show. We'll see you again for another one next Tuesday. We're still doing these twice a week, uh, is the plan right now. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be doing a solo uh uh, requested review because I don't have friends and nobody wants to review with me. No, everybody's busy tomorrow night besides me, so I'm going to be doing a requested review on uh, Spider-Man Blue by Jeff Loeb, 
and Ooh. I started reading that, and uh, I will finish reading it tomorrow and then talk about it with you guys, uh, some of you guys, hopefully tomorrow night. Uh, it's going to be 10 o'clock central, like I usually do on Fridays. And then uh, over the weekend, I'm going to be doing a discussion on Invincible sometime in the afternoon on Sunday. I haven't gotten a time together with uh, Connor yet on that. And then Monday night is a rewind on a movie that may or may not count as a superhero movie uh, that it's been a debate for 21 years. Donnie Darko. Is it a superhero movie? I don't know. You be the judge. I'm doing it on Superhero Rewind. It was requested a million years ago, and I'm finally getting around to it for request month. Anyway, get a t-shirt, because you can't watch Geekvolution video without a Geekvolution t-shirt. Uh, I'm also going to try to get some t-shirts and a mug or two uh, sometime Me too. soon, so that we can have like the swag, so that we can show you guys all the neat swag. Uh, sorry for bringing that up too much. It's just We just started it. I'm excited about it. And they're on sale right now. So anyway, check that out if you're so inclined. Patreon.com slash Geekvolution. You can become a patron and get a request, or just uh, start at the $2 tier and watch Geekvolution After Dark, which we do twice a month. We're doing it again next Thursday night. We'll talk about all kinds of things that we never talk about on the channel and use language that is inappropriate. And Brandon. 100% more Brandon. Which is also inappropriate. He is just inappropriate by virtue of being Brandon. <laughs> Thank, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again real soon. I was Captain Logan, and this was DJ Martinez. See you later, folks. Bye, guys. Bye, yeah. Yeah.